future. But did you know that millions of kids right here in our own backyard are facing hunger every day? Without healthy food, it's harder to grow, to thrive, to feel their best. The impact when children don't have enough to eat is tremendous because when you're hungry and your basic needs aren't being met, you cannot learn. Every child deserves to be fed. This is a problem we know how to solve. Food is not just food. It's energy, health, confidence, hope, and even love. Yes, love. Breakfast in the classroom contributes to kids being more focused, which leads to higher grades, and simply just their well-being. Thank you! Learn more about how No Kid Hungry is helping end child hunger in America at helpnokidhungry.org. show on yes is brought to you by untuck it shirts designed to be worn untucked shop now at untuckit.com and a good afternoon everybody this is indeed the michael k show michael don peter until 6 30 it is um Wednesday, April 10, 2024. So much to do. Oh, so much Wednesday. to talk about. It, it's, a, it's a would you Wednesday. I don't That's know if right. you know that. I'm aware. And I put a lot of effort into this. I think there's going to be oh, some good ones. Yeah. I think you guys are going to be surprised. You'll be pleased. And it'll, it'll make you think, which is well, what, what the show's about. That's what we're trying to strive to do is to Every think. Every day. Make, make us think. You know, we, do, we, we exercise our bodies, or at least we should. But do we exercise our minds? Let's I ask think, that question. I think I do, but I can't speak very for deep the two of you, Don. Oh, we know very. Michael does. What? Exercise his mind? Yeah. I did some mind push-ups before I, was, I got here today. I was no, say, no, now, what does that look like? I was going to say we know he exercises his hands, but his mind, mm. different story. What does that mean? Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean. I need more, more uh, information, more detail, if it's you will. All, it's all in the hands of the beholder. Oh, is it? <laughs> Let's start Knicks. Let's start off with the Knicks. Yeah, Big win against a... the Bulls yesterday. Once again, Brunson is just, he's having the MVP season. I don't think he's going to win the MVP. But it's an MVP season. It's an MVP level season. He's, mm -hmm. he's got to be in the top five. Tell me five players that are more valuable to their team than him. You got Jokic, right? He's yeah. incredibly valuable. Who else? Tatum. Tatum. Thank Edwards. You. Nixon's yeah, and, and then and then, you, then Brunson gets thrown in. Has to be. It, it, it's it's so interesting. I don't know whether it's a New York bias. Gilgis or Alexander. I, that would probably yeah, be the that, next yeah, one. that's that's a really good one. Because um, because you can say the same for Panarin with the Rangers. You know he's not going to win it because it just those circumstances. There's just certain guys, the McDavid's and the McKennons and the Kucherovs, they're going to get more consideration. Uh, and it's kind of the same. But if you watch these two teams play. And I look at MVP in all sports is where would the team be without this guy? So maybe it's not always the best player. It's just what they mean to the team. Can you tell me that anyone means more to their team than Brunson means to the Knicks, especially with Randall being out? Last seven games, Don, he's averaging 38 points a game. Yeah, I, again, I don't know how good that is because somebody else is going to have to step up. But because because once you get to the playoffs, I would think some of these really good defensive teams and good coaches are going to figure out a way to shut them down. Is Ananobi enough to be able to go out there and get points if they hold Jalen just down to like say twenty five? It'll be like what win. UConn did with Zach Eady. Let, let Jalen get his points, and we'll hold everybody right. else down. Because when you're getting those, they, listen, there's nothing wrong with scoring 25 points a game, Michael. That's outstanding. But for Brunson, that would be almost cutting his his production almost in half. So where does that, where do the other points come from? But he has just been incredible. And it, it's captivating to watch. I mean, I was doing the Rangers last night, but we had the Nick uh, Bulls game on. And it's just, it, 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 he's putting on a show every night. Put, and, you know, they're obviously planning for him every team and they can't stop him. No. But let's, I mean... We've talked about no Julius Randle, what it's going to mean. Well, he, the, there, were, there were some things that happened yesterday. Knicks won a game they had to win. The Bucks end up losing Giannis Antetokounmpo. There, there was some fear 
that it was an Achilles injury. It turns out the Achilles is intact, and it's just a calf injury. But calf injuries, I've said this forever, they take forever. They take forever, especially in a sport like basketball. In baseball, it, it takes forever. So you can imagine how long it's going to take for Giannis to get back at full strength. So in all likelihood, the Knicks have a chance to finish with the number two seed. So we should be celebrating, right? Well, if you really want to be a rational Nick fan, I don't know if you want to finish with the two seed. I think it's better to finish with the three seed. If you finish with the two seed, there are two teams that you might play that I don't know if you want to play. That's so the true. Sixers with Embiid back mm -hmm. and the Heat. Who are the Heat? Right. And you're going to get playoff Jimmy, and, and you, you have to go up against Eric Spolstra. That's, That's in the first round. So do you want to finish second, or do you want to finish third? And the Pacers who don't play any defense, they just score. Right. So that just seems to be the better matchup, right? So if it's they sexy. finish third, they would, and the season ended right now, they'd, finish, they'd play the Pacers. Now, it's still very much up in the air because the Sixers are only a game back of the Pacers, and... Uh, and, and the Heat are right there, too, so they could change. But if the season ended today, and everybody's got, what, about three games left to play? Yep. But you definitely would take the Pacers over the Sixers or the Heat. The Sixers scare me with Embiid. They really do. Well, why wouldn't they? Now, the Knicks have beaten them with Embiid, and, and we're not saying that they can't win, Michael, but... It's a tougher do, matchup. It's a tougher matchup. There's the same conversation I have about the Rangers and the Lightning. I'm not saying the Rangers can't beat the Lightning. I'd pick the Rangers to beat the Lightning, but... When you want to try to make a long run, it would probably take six, seven games to dispose of them. And while Carolina's playing whoever, and they sweep in the first round, that's a distinct advantage. So if the Knicks have to play the Sixers, yeah, they can beat them. But what kind of disadvantage is that going to put them in in the second round when they probably have to go you know, blow for blow with that team six, seven games? You don't have to deal with that. Now, if they finish fourth... Uh, they would play the Cavaliers. That, that's not a matchup I love either, but they, they beat the Cavaliers. Uh, the, the, the matchup that I would want the most, and you'll, you'll all laugh at me, is Orlando. Orlando's a newbie in this. They have a yeah. great player in Bancaro, but I think the Knicks handle Orlando. Now, they don't I, even I have agree. the tiebreaker over Orlando, but yeah. I, I believe the Knicks are far better than Orlando. Now, I, I feel good about the Knicks against anybody, but, but if you're going to rate the possible first-round opponents... It's very interesting that I think they grade out better the higher you go up in the standings. I think the last team you want to have to play after having a phenomenal season and overcoming everything you had to overcome is having a best-of-seven series with the Miami Heat. Really? Thank you, sir. <laughs> what did I do? What did I do wrong? I, it, it, when, when I was talking about a good coach, when I said good coach to figure out a plan to stop Brunson, the person I envisioned was Spolstra. That's, that's, the, that's the face that popped into my head when we said good coach. What kind of first-round draw would that be? And that's likely the eighth seed. See, Miami's so smart because they don't put it all out there on the line during the season because they don't. it doesn't matter where they finish. Well, because they, they, they'll take on anybody and couldn't beat anybody. And then with the Sixers, I don't think that this was any grand plan. And Embiid got hurt. So they're not the same team without Joel Embiid. Now he's back, and he's healthy. And the other guys, I think they got better without him because they had to step up their game to just keep their head above water. So the Sixers are in a seventh or eighth seed. They're just not. They're more like a two or a three right. seed with Embiid. But what, I, what I'll say to you, though, is that it's smart unless you end up losing to the Sixers in the play-in. <laughs> then your season's over. Right. I mean, it's not ideal to have to go through the extra layer. But if they get out of it, and then and then you would say next would be the Sixers you wouldn't want to have to play. Well, they, they're the seven seed. Well, if you finish seventh or eighth, this is what you have to gamble with, with the, with the Heat. Can you win one of two? You don't want to finish ninth or tenth because then it becomes a one-game season. Yeah. But seventh or eighth, you lose, okay, and then you play the winner of the eight, yeah. nine, ten game. I mm -hmm. think you've got a good chance if you're Miami to win one of two. Yeah. But isn't it strange that the lower the seeding in the conference, the tougher the opponent? Yeah, because of the injury to Embiid and the fact that Miami paces itself. They got and Hero the back seat. the other night. What's that? I'm sorry. They got Hero back the other night, yeah, so oh, oh, they're, they, they're a they, good team. No, they beat the Knicks without Hero last year. Yep.
It's crazy. again, again. Crazy. There's a reason you just don't want to play that team. It's just who they are. That that is, that is the team that they are. You want to avoid that at all cost. And I thought they would win last year. I mean, remember I had New that one. little bet with Griffin. I thought they would. I thought they'd run away with it. You came through, right? I believe so. Yeah. No, he sent the hat. Yeah. And well, you you didn't guarantee it, but you all but guaranteed. I all but guaranteed it. You were all around the bullseye. Yes. And I'm embarrassed but, about it. <laughs> well, no, but you should be. You were smart. There was a reason why you didn't actually say the word guarantee. But we knew what you were talking. You were very confident. Well, I, I, I said that after they won the first round series, that the Knicks are going to the conference finals. But when we asked you to guarantee it, you wouldn't do it. I refuse because I'm gutless <laughs> and I have no guts. That's what gutless is. <laughs> that was a, that was an interesting. Okay. But you know the the very Peter because I I like darts. I'm a big dart guy. Okay. So you like darts, a, really? You don't. It's fun. Yeah, you can injure people. Take an eye out. What kind of darts do you play? Uh, wild darts. It's called. <laughs> you know, you've got the green around, and then the, then the actual cork, the red. Michael was just hammering around the green. He just did not want to say guarantee because he's smart. But when you say they're moving on to the conference final, you're saying it without saying it. Well, but then you ask me specifically, you're that's guaranteeing right. it. No, I don't guarantee those things. I can't why. guarantee it. Now, I would guarantee I would guarantee something that I have a, um, a role in, but if I have no role in it, why would I guarantee it? Now, I could make it happen if I have a role in it, but I'm not playing for the heat. I refuse to guarantee things. Patrick Ewing should have never guaranteed things. And you know what? I think it's a mark against his legacy. It's, it became it's one, laughable. It's one of the first things you think of. Isn't yeah. that a shame? Yes, it, and it's wrong. He shouldn't have done it. And he never learned his lesson. He kept doing it. over. I, I, you should believe in your <laughs> team. Just, but He was hoping that eventually he'd get it right and we'd remember the last one. Yeah, because everybody <laughs> wants to be Mark Messier. He guaranteed that game seven. He ended up winning. So now he's a god. Right. But if you guarantee and you lose, you're a clod. Well, you, it's, 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 right. it's just a couple of letters off. It rhymes. It, it, but it, do you want to be a god or a clod? Right or wrong, it's going to be god one of the first things clod. you think of, right? <laughs> Patrick Ewing had an amazing Damn. collegiate and NBA career. One of the top 50 players of all time. Oh, yeah. First thing you think of is he couldn't nail any of his guarantees. M Messier, that, the first thing you think of is the guarantee. Yep. Jim Fossil, first thing you think of is the guarantee. Joe Namath, first thing you think of is the guarantee. Because they got it right. It's a new game we're going to be playing. We're, going to, we're working it out now with the you know Parker brothers. It's actually going to be a board game, too. God or Claude. <laughs> And I think you really want to be God. You don't want to be Claude. <laughs> I never heard Claude before. You never heard the word Claude? I, I don't think so. Peter, yeah, never. You've, you've experienced Claude, right? Never have. I've, I've, I've experienced the word, perhaps, but I couldn't define it with a gun to my head. So. Well, you know what? You don't need a gun to your head because we got a little Google here. Definition of Claude. I think it's kind of a goof, uh, goofball. That's C-L-O-D? Yep. You know, like a blood Claude. No, no. <laughs> That's a clot. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Sorry. Definition of Claude. Here we go. Claude. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Person often used as a general term of abuse. You're an insensitive Claude, and I hope you fall and break your neck. Oh, oh my God. God. That's, that's the example? That's the example they yeah. give? Yeah. Is that like uh, at Webster's? Uh, it's the dictionary on Google. Oh. Uh, Michael, I have now caught up and watched the... Uh, series finale of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Nailed it, didn't he? It was really good. It, it really, really, really good. Hit hit on a multitude of levels, and I was... Did you watch, finish yet? Yes, I did. I, and I was so pleased that Richard Lewis is in the last scene. Mm. Yes. I just thought that was wonderful. And did you guys have the thought, maybe this is obvious, so I apologize if this is like totally obvious and I'm just not that bright? Probably that. <laughs> is it me... Or did they sort of have that? I don't recall any other restaurant scenes with Larry, Jeff, Susie, and Leon. And it seemed interesting to me that in the last episode, they had that scene. I don't know, like the, the, the four of them, right? One woman, the three guys, all sitting at like a diner, I thought was super interesting. And Leon, the fact that he was watching the old Seinfelds, and it kept coming up. It sort of made me realize there's one moment when, do you guys catch the spot when when Leon's like that Kramer man? Like he's always in your house. Uh, you you get Jerry just has to put a revolving door on. I was like, well, 
Leon is Kramer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, that never crossed my mind prior to this. Yeah, I thought you were going to say uh, you thought it was like the final scene from The Sopranos <laughs> where they start saying, don't, don't stop know what believing. Happens. No, I just I just thought it was really there. All there are lots of little things. It wasn't just the obvious court scene at the end, the the jail scene. There was it felt like there were lots of little things. Well, oh, I mean the whole thing mirrored Seinfeld's final episode, as we said, but it ended better because Jerry yes. came and played the hero. And of course, they referenced it blatantly, sort of made fun of the fact that the Seinfeld's finale wasn't good even though Larry's fought that tooth and nail. But I think I was hit the most by the Richard Lewis piece of it. I love that he was in the final episode. He made it through the whole season. It was great, man. That season started rough. Me and Michael sat here after weeks one and two going, I don't know. this. I don't. And he really got that thing back on the tracks. It ended up becoming a great season. And it also is not, it's not closed. I mean, if he wants to come back, he can come back. You mean the, you mean the way the episode ended? Yeah, it's not closed. Yeah, but he's done. He's done. He meant it. He he didn't do this hoopla for no reason. I have I have No, I think it is done, but if he like if he has an epiphany and goes, you know, I miss it. Or I want to do one, you know, let me do a special. Uh, yeah, he absolutely could because because essentially nothing happened. Right. Although that woman is after him and she bought a gun. That was an interesting thing they they threw in there, you know? Yeah. So I thought, that, then I said, well, he's going to get shot at the end. It's going to be like that. Yeah, that's, what, yeah, that's so, what I thought. So tell me the truth. Because it never went anywhere. Yeah, I did. That did cross my mind, too. Exactly. And I was like, where did Richard's girlfriend go? But real quick, prior to this conversation, you guys had openly thought before Leon is Kramer. I had never thought that. And then when, when Leon started talking about Kramer, I went, oh, my God, he showed up in Larry's house and never left. I he don't. I never Kramer. thought of it that way, no. Not do, do you see it now, though? Yeah, absolutely. And also, a lot of people are saying on social media, what a great series that would be where Leon just breaks down every Seinfeld. And then Jerry's line, yeah, they're all on uh, Blu-ray. <laughs> oh, no, no, laser, that, laser, that, laser, that, laser disc. Yeah. He looked great, by the way. He did. Well, He's aging very well. Well, yeah, he, he let did. let his hair grow back. He le let it grow back? Ooh. It's an interesting way of putting that. Allegation. <laughs> no, I just think he cut it really short. You're, and he let you're it grow back. out. You, you, uh, Michael, wow. I got to talk to you about the tooth fairy. We got to have a conversation what, you, later. You think that those are plugs or he's, he's taking medicine? Go, go look on Twitter. Right. Uh, there, someone posted back to back. You know how you know when Fallon has guests, they always post the same sort of look for an image. Right. Someone showed like the one from four years ago and the one from like four months ago. He he made a move. Now, I don't know. I can't tell you whether it was surgical or, or one of the great treatments we have, but a decision was made. I don't think it was let me let my hair grow out. I don't think he pulled a don during COVID. He Maybe. might have. Don't don't he you in the front. People don't let their hair grow out in front. It, they always they whatever it is. It looked terrific. He looks fan. I he looked and he looked forty nine. He looked amazing. And if you're looking for something with the Ranger, again, the Rangers get. Well, I, I don't remember him ever talking. Uh, maybe maybe about hockey a little bit, but never specifically about the Rangers. Last two episodes. So something going. I on. I love that he referenced the 2004 collapse too. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> Alice and Janney was that was a nice get for the girlfriend too. They had some they had some heavy hitters there at the end. That was a, that was a good. And episode. Greg Kinnear was great as the yeah. lawyer. Perfect. And, oh, and and wait, do you already reference the other guy? Who the other guy? Right before Greg Kinnear. No, I just said Alice and Janney. And the and and the judge. Oh yeah, that's right. The From Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad, yeah. Yeah, I had that, no idea who he was. That's unfortunate. He was the uh, brother-in-law. Big character. You know what I have in my hand right now? Uh, if it's something well, I don't Karen care about, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's tonight's Yankee starting lineup. <laughs> well, it's kind of the same. On thing. 98.7 ESPN, brought to you by Bigelow Tea and Soda Pro Painters. <laughs> Michael, it serves the same. Purpose. Everybody's getting what they want, Don. Everybody's getting what they want. You know who's leading off for the Yankees? Uh. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Is it? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. A little yeah. Anthony Volpe action? Well, I don't know if you have to call him Little Anthony. He's not a <laughs> rock star in the 50s. <laughs> it's Anthony Volpe, well, the shortstop. I was, I wasn't calling him Little. I was calling the action Little. What? <laughs> what? Little, I said Little Volpe action. Oh. Juan Soto's in right field batting second. Aaron Judge in center field hitting eight, uh, third. Uh, Giancarlo Stanton, the DH, will clean up. Batting fifth, first baseman Anthony Rizzo. Glaber Torres, who has not been hitting, he drops down to the number six spot at second base. Alex Verdugo started to hit. He's batting seventh and playing left field. John Birdie at third base will bat eighth. 
and batting ninth and catching, it's Jose Trevino. Marcus Stroman is going to pitch for the Yankees. That's tonight's Yankees starting lineup against the Marlins, brought to you by Bigelow T. Bigelow T, proud supporter of the Michael K Show and the official hot tea of the New York Yankees and Serta Pro Painters. When choosing a painting professional for your home or business, the choice is simple. Choose happy. Choose Serta Pro Painters. Some bad news, though, Don and Peter, for Yankee fans. Some of them I think is bad news. Others, it's not a big deal. Oh, no. Game's on Prime today. Well, who would think it's good news? Well, people that have Prime. Yeah, but the people who have Prime probably have yes. Right, so it doesn't impact them other right. than they so, use a different so this, remote. So the only people that, so there's no happy. It's just either you're upset or not impacted. That's why I don't understand. Like, why should I be excited it's on Prime? I, I don't know. I can't I can't tell you what because if you if, because if you um if you pull the plug or whatever they cut the cord right you you might have the yes app right so what's the difference <laughs> see I just that's what I'm saying I don't know explain it to me like it was like big news there's an NFL game on Peacock well, who cares like who are the people the that people are that care are the people that don't have it is what I'm saying. Those are the people that care. Right, but they, but they make it seem like you should be excited. No one's excited. This is bad news. Well, I don't know if it's bad well, I news. I know you're in a tough spot. I'm, I am in no spot. So I'm going to tell you, when I find out my team's on an app, I'm disappointed. And I can have the app. But and you're I, still disappointed. Yeah, of course. It's either a nothing burger or you're disgusted. But when they promote it, they'll be like, oh, yeah. did you hear? Who promotes it's it be like that? Prime. Who promotes it like that? Whenever it's said, hey, Yankees on Prime. Well, well you're putting the exclamation be, point be at the end of the lower sentence. Case. And yeah, the announcer prime. should always go, by the way, Yankee game is on Prime. Yeah, that's a good way to lose your job, too. Well, who's, you gonna you can. who's firing you? Prime? <laughs> Yes and Prime or yes and Amazon are co-owners of yes. Listen, you're the you're Michael K, man. Yeah, okay. Swing it. You do realize that Marv Albert was fired, right? Oh, you're gonna put yourself up with Marv. No, you, I'm you, not. I'm not. No, but that, uh, that's my point. No, the, no, no, but no, no, no. I don't mean you could put yourself up with Marv. You're an amazing announcer, but you, you're too well liked. They built the network around you. Well, the, you've got some sway, well, man. MSG was built around Marv. Now, the first time he was fired, it was for extenuating circumstances. The next time he was fired, he wasn't positive right. enough. So you haven't even gotten to the first firing yet. And well, you're I not hope gonna, I don't get and, to that and, one. Right, and you're not gonna ever get to that point for the first firing. As far as you know, I will not. Uh, that, I got to tell you, there's a lot of things that would shock me. <laughs> that would shock me more than anything. If if that kind of stuff happened to me. <laughs> yes. You know what? If it did, it would shock me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the phones. And, you know, if we, we started with the Knicks, so that means we have to start with Spike. He has been conspicuously absent of late. Spike, what's going on? That is not true, and you are in the pantheon of great announcers. You're right there with Mark. Oh, stop. When I'll tell you, no, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Please I, tell I, me I, why. I'm 90% hoops, 10% baseball Yankees. And when Marv Albert's voice was heard, you knew it was an important game. And same for you. You did all those 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 runs of championships. And uh, you're right there, my friend. Trust me. And at least in my eyes. Uh, Mar Marvin so James. I'm not no, even, I'm, uh, Peter, I know you're being, you know, funny. I'm not even more of a Jace, but thank you, Spike. No, it's the truth. I, I, listen, I speak from uh, having a lot of knowledge of younger people who, when I tell them I know you, it's like, you know, I... It's just crazy. But, anyway, I mean, but, but Marv is a Marv is a national guy who also had the the playoffs and finals. Right. It's, it's a tough spot. You're you're being very kind, but it's a tough spot because Marv, you know. Tomorrow. Well, Peter, I'm not. An, I'm speaking for myself. I mean, I'm not a national. I live in New York, New Jersey fair, area, fair, and I'm in Florida. Fair, so fair. Michael's important to me. Right. Thank that, you. That, 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 You're important to me. Spike. Wow, that's as close as Spike has ever gotten to snip to hot. I yeah. like it. You know what? I like it. That's a guy defending his, his guy. I love you, Spike. 
I love you. I love you all. I've been very fortunate and blessed in my life, and it's a long life, and I'm grateful. So here we go. Are we reliving 1994 again? I asked Anthony on the pre pickup. He wasn't even alive when the Rangers won. Messi had a hat trick, if I remember, in, in, in that, that one of those games. But then Patrick is, yes. Patrick, when they tore the poster up and he made the guarantees, but he was one of these guys, really, that, you know, his college and pro careers were both tremendous, really. Tremendous guy, just a little irascible or prickly, as you called them last time, Michael. He wasn't, uh, his personality with Mike Jarvis, it goes a long way. But let me tell you what I see. You know, you take the slide rule, the abacus out, looking at the brilliance of the NBA, what they've done with this play-in tournament. If I would have told you five years ago the Lakers and Golden State are 9 and 10 and can still get in, if I would have told you 39-year-old LeBron James has beaten Father Time in my eyes, just look at his stats, and Steph Curry is still great, and the three teams tied almost for the top of the West, and the Knicks, we're talking about who do you want to play? There's only one team I don't want to play. And, Peter, you know how I feel about you. I would rather play Boston than Miami. It's really? just something. I get it. Something. About, you get it? Something about Wiley, you know, with the facts and going to Greece. And there's a lot of histrionics there. But this Knicks team is special. And maybe Jalen Brunson is the Reggie Jackson of creations for the Knicks. Because they play beautiful basketball. One more thing. How does Josh Hart get every loose ball? Because he, you know what? He plays hard. He plays hard all the time. And thank you for those kind words. You know, the, the thing about Marv and everything, I got into what, what would be construed for us as a fight with Mike Green. So we're texting each other, and I, I think I made a comment like, uh, you know, the day I die, Two weeks later, I'll be forgotten. And he said, what's wrong with you? Why do you say stuff like that? I said, that's just the way it is. It's not like I'm going to be, like, lionized. I'm just, I'm a guy who did a nice job. Not a, no, I'm not, any, I'm not an immortal. Oh, will you stop it? It's true. Two no. weeks after death, I, I will not I'm, be thought of by anybody but my family. I don't I, think, I, come on. I, come on, I don't think a month goes by without me thinking about Bob Murphy. You're bigger than Bob Murphy. No. Sure. No. Sure. I mean, no. you, Michael, you always go. Too, TV. You always go too far. Yeah, you've gone too far. You, you go. You take a step too far. Why yeah, is that too far? Because yes, you're not Marv. Okay, fine. But you are a very notable, beloved sportscaster. Two weeks. Right. Two and, weeks. Oh, come on. Is that, so, now so, you're, so in week three, it'll be Michael. Who? What? Right. It's not like they'll miss again. me. In week three, the I guy? will not be. I'm, I might be missed. Well, first of all, I'll probably retire before I die. What? You you having a separate conversation? No, I don't show, know. I show, hear another voice. I don't show's, know. Keep, show's not keeping you entertained. It's no, not, it's very entertaining it. today. <laughs> and wait, do you, wait, wait till we get to Would You Wednesday. Oh, I can't wait. All right, let's take a brief time out. Why, why talk about terrible things, not you know? Sure. Although that's most of the show. Anyway, we'll come back. we got a lot to do. Uh, the Rangers-Islander game, very, very odd. And a big win for the Islanders. And strange reaction by Peter Laviolette. We'll get to all of it, I promise. Right here on Yes and 98.7 ESPN. The Michael K Show on Yes is presented by Untuck It. Shirts designed to be worn untucked. Shop now at untuckit.com. The best ideas come from solving common problems. My problem, like a lot of other men, I couldn't find a shirt that looked good untucked. So this became my passion, to design a shirt that captures the perfect balance between length and fit. Easy to say, not that easy to do. But with some innovative design changes, we did it. Our problem, my solution. Untuckit.com. Is it possible to be more capable and more practical? Be able to perform here and here. Make a statement while barely making a sound. And command the road as well as what lies ahead. How we get there matters. Get exceptional offers at your local Audi dealer. What if I told you the next great hybrid technology wasn't for a new car or a computer chip, 
what it was for. The best ribeye every time. Hexlad's hybrid cookware gives you the performance of stainless steel, the durability of cast iron, and the convenience of non-stick. Welcome to the hybrid revolution. Welcome to Hexlad. It's go time in Brooklyn, and we got grit. Mikel Bridges has got a highlight. We got gay. On the clutch attack. We got goals. Schroeder, does he have the hot hand? Yes, sir. We got Raptors versus Nets. Tonight at 7 on Yes and the Yes app. When the Warrior Project has been with me every step of my journey. Aaron, how you doing, buddy? When the experiences that help me realize that I'm not alone. And specialized programs that give me the tools to train my body and mind. Now it's possible for me to get back out there. To get out of my comfort zone and try new things. To build and be part of a community that supports other warriors. It's possible to get the help I need for me and my family. I got my confidence back. I'm setting goals and I'm achieving them. It's possible to feel understood, whether it's day one or 20 years down the road, they've got your back. And as each warrior's needs evolve, Wounded Warrior Project is adapting to meet them. Because when we pull together, it's possible to go further than you ever imagined. told me to call Freedom Care, and they'll pay my granddaughter to take care of me. Funded by Medicaid, Freedom Care allows people to choose who provides their care, and the caregiver gets paid instantly after their shift. Life is sweeter with her around. Nanny gave me so much joy as a child. Now it's my turn to return the love. Call now to find out benefits and pay, and how fast you can get started. To get more hits out here, start training in here. Introducing Win Reality. Game speed pitches anywhere, anytime. Hands in sync with eyes. Confidence in sync with your progress. Be ready for real Win Reality. Taste is not an option. Taste is everything. 1800, the world's most awarded tequila. For the Michael K. Show, Carlos Rodon getting his first win of the season is brought to you by Montefiore Einstein, the official hospital of the New York Yankees. Rodon called his outing last night a step in the right direction. He also said his confidence is growing. And why not? The veteran left-hander took a shutout into the seventh inning. He helped the Yankees out to a franchise-tying best mark at 10-2 to start the season. And the team hasn't lost a series so far this year as well after sweeping Houston, taking two of three from Toronto. And so far, the first two against the Marlins. Rodon by the numbers last night looks like this. He went six plus, throwing 89 pitches, allowed those two unearned runs, so his ERA dropped more than a run, down to a very healthy 1.72. Tonight's game will be on Prime Video with coverage beginning at 6.30, and first pitch is scheduled for a little after 7. And don't forget, after the game, you can catch a full post game show back on yes and streaming on the yes app after our nets coverage By Tullamar Dew Irish Whiskey. The Yankees wrap up their series at the Marlins tonight, looking for the sweet. Marcus Stroman's on the mound. First pitch will be at 7.05 on Prime. Mets take on the Braves in Atlanta at 7.20. That's on SNY. And the Nets welcome the Raptors into Brooklyn at 7.30. And that baby is on Yes. That's game time brought to you by Tullamar Dew Irish Whiskey. Because when it's game time, it's Tully time. Tullamore Dew, the original triple distilled, triple blended, and triple cask matured Irish whiskey. Be sure to grab a Tullamore Dew or try the brand new Tullamore Dew Honey during tonight's action. Glasses up to enjoying Tullamore Dew responsibly. Let's take some phone calls. 1-800-919-3776. Tori in Brooklyn. Tori. Uh, Peter, how's it going? Good, um, how are you? Quick question. Do, 
good. Um, I had two quick points. One main thing is about the Knicks, and this is coming from someone that's not a Knicks fan at all, but I was just in a debate with um, some of uh, my buddies, and I've been telling them that it's hard to argue that Jalen Brunson hasn't been the best point guard in the NBA this season because he really doesn't have another – his next best player right now is who? Um, DiVincenzo, who I don't know. I don't know he picked in the first round. Uh, or hard, yeah, or hard, but like they're they're not all stars at all. All right, so, so let's look at some of the saying, point guards. You think he's better than Halliburton? Right now, yeah, he's playing better than Halliburton. I'm, and I'm not saying like over, but I'm saying playing better than. Yeah, uh, I think he's playing better than Halliburton. You think he's better than Steph Curry? Right now, yeah. Luka Steph Doncic. Curry's team is fighting to be in the play Luka. Yes. And then that's who that's who my friends say. They're saying Luca and SGA are bet, playing better. Those, than those right are the now. tough ones. Those how are the about, two toughest. How about but I Lillard? But I, I think he's playing better than Lillard. And here's the main reason: he sees all these double teams. Lillard has Giannis, so he's not getting as many double teams. Luca has Kyrie, so he's not seeing as many double teams. SGA has Home Grid and a couple of those other young guys. Who else is who's who else is there to double on the Knicks besides Jalen Brunson? And once again, I'm not a Knicks fan. Like, I hope they lose. I, I can care less about them. <laughs> this, I'm a Nets fan. This is what makes this a great call, Don. This, yeah. is, this is why I'm Let's enjoying it. it. It's, it's, it's hard to argue that he's been that great. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say you're wrong, Tori. I mean, the, the fact that we can have the discussion tells you how great he's been. And that's and that's that's been my whole thing. So like and so I just want to at least I can get some credibility that at least uh, yeah. my, the, the Michael K show agrees with me but, at but, that point. And but Michael, I, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna. I feel like when you're trying to win an MVP like Brunson is, it's almost like trying to become the number one team in college football when you weren't ranked at the start of the season. Like you're at such a disadvantage because everyone goes in with their preconceived notions of all the other players. So a player like Brunson has to do so much extra work because he wasn't on the radar that early in the season and and if you watch him every day i think we'd all share the same opinion that he should be up there well, what was your last point and that, and that and i agree with you don and the last point and i don't know if you have talked about this before i was busy so i couldn't i didn't listen yesterday um but the whole thing with otani with that baseball with the fans how is he getting away with this like how is that okay and how is that even allowed like, I don't understand yeah, how that I, more think, of an I, I think that was more, from what I know of it, and I'm not really totally immersed in it, Tori, that more of a Dodger thing. And you could get away with anything if you can't get questioned about anything. He doesn't get questioned about anything. He has carte blanche to do what he wants. There are no ramifications, nothing. He does not get questioned. Here's, I was thinking about this, and we talked about this a lot the other day. Every big player in baseball... Every star, Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Aaron Judge, you name the biggest stars, Ronald Acuna Jr., Mike Trout, every one of them should say, we're not talking to the media. Then we'll see if Major League Baseball actually steps up and goes, well, it's, it's part of people's contract. You have to talk to the media. Then why isn't it being enforced with Otani? Why do I have to spend my time talking to the media if he doesn't? And you know how I feel. Everybody should talk to the media because, in essence, that's how you talk to the fans. The fact that one guy gets away with it, every other big star in baseball should draw a line in the sand. If he's not talking, we're not talking. And then Major League Baseball, who will not, get, who will not be getting any publicity for their stars, they'll finally wake up and they'll force Otani to talk. It's not that hard to answer questions unless you don't have good answers. Well, he's also going to play the whole, you know, because of the interpreter. Yeah, but you know what? Matsui I, answer every day. I know. Michael, you're 100% right, but if the Dodgers have his back, what are you supposed to do? Well, that's when, that's when Major League Baseball has to step in. What? He has to talk. He has to answer questions. I mean, forget about the gambling aspect. Forget about it. But it's hard to forget about that because that's a major, major point. How about as a player? What pitch did you hit? But what would you? What could you do? Fine them. I'm sure that there's not. There's only so much money you can fine them per game, and the money he's making, and the Dodgers would probably have his back anyway. But then every How player that I name him? makes big money, and then they all could say I'm not talking. I mean, what's going to stop these great players from saying I'm not talking? You think these guys love talking to the media? No. So the one guy gets away with it, no, nobody else does. It's it's insane. Peter, you have a choice. Right now, on a team right now, who's your point guard? 
Gilgis, Alexander, Doncic, or Brunson? It's probably Doncic for me. Um, I, I think he's the ultimate superstar of that group. Just I, I've seen, I have more proof of it over a longer That's period true. of time. But I, I think it is a fair argument for for anyone. But, uh, but but see, we get caught in that when you're talking about the MVP, should the past matter? Should age matter? Should reputation matter? Or in that moment, who's the most important player? I'll tell you what, Doncic is pretty important. Gilgis yeah. Alexander is pretty important. No, they're all of it because they play an important position. And those and all those teams are where they are because of the play of those players. And, again, we're going to be biased because we see Brunson every day. But, my God, every single night, Michael, he's carrying this team, a wounded team, not just to the finish line, but maybe to the two seed in the conference. It's amazing. He's been amazing. And, and you know, we've had this discussion before. In the history of New York sports, name a better free agent signing. Reggie was great. Catfish was great. Name a better one than this. Well, the only one in the the only one right now that's in the ballpark is Panera. Because he's fourth in the league in scoring. And you could say the same about him, what he's done for the Rangers and his 116 points. But the difference is there's other stars around Panera. Uh, what do the Knicks have? Who, who's the Knicks Sabanajad or, or Kreider or Fox or Trocek? We're, we're, we're talking about DiVincenzo. He wasn't even here five minutes ago. Same thing with um, Hartenstein. I mean, we didn't look at these guys as saviors when the season started, and they've all been elevated. Hart, we knew what he could do when they traded for him last year, but not to this level. But really, none of those guys are stars. Well, how about the history of New York sports? Well, then you're talking Adam Graves because his Catfish, numbers in the Raptors. Catfish, Reggie, um, CC. Oh well, well, I came up with well, I came up with my list off the air. Mm -hmm. They call it the D list that they put up on social media. D for Don. Yeah, that's right. Not right. D for significance. Although there is confusion. You know why I had number one? Who? Kevin Mawai. Well, you know what? It's hard to argue. He had a He's great a career. Hall of Famer. Uh, he doesn't go to the Hall of Fame based on what he did in Seattle before he got here. He didn't even go to a Pro Bowl. All of his Pro Bowls were with the Jets, but that's not sexy. He was a center. It's an offensive Curtis lineman. Curtis Martin's a good free agent. Yeah, Curtis Martin would be up there too. Um, but we're looking at, and let's see what happens in the postseason. Same thing with Panarin too, because if they fall on their face in the postseason, it's not going to age very well. But right now, I mean, I, when I came up with the top five, Michael, it wasn't in the sense of the best. Because Carlos Beltran was terrific. Yep. But exceeding expectations. Like, I don't think any Nick fan in the world thought they'd get this from Brunson when they signed. I don't think the Knicks thought it. You know, so that's what makes it so special. I mean, Panarin, maybe he's exceeded expectations, but not to the level that Brunson has. And also, if you want to argue about the Lucas stuff, Lucas not your your traditional point guard. Brunson is. Mm -hmm. I mean, because for a lot, you know, Kyrie's handling the ball too. Lucas kind of like a hybrid. I mean, he's considered a point guard, but is he really a point guard? Shea Gilgis Alexander is a point guard. It's but, but John talking. Moran, if he's healthy, has to be considered. He's great. Trey right. Young oh. is great. Wasn't that long ago? The Knicks didn't have a point guard. It was the it was it was a dark black hole of trying to find somebody to play that position. Now they have somebody to play that position that's among the best in the league. Amazing, and he's underpaid. Let's go to Mark in Charlotte. Mark. Hey, fellas, how's it hanging? Mark. <laughs> Very well. All right, Mark, you're ah, done, so and good. it's ugly the way you were done, and I don't like the fact that you just slowed the show down. It sickens me. Well, this was a really good start to the show. I'm not I'm not going to allow him to mess with it. Anthony in Jersey City. Anthony. Hey, guys. How you doing? Thanks for having me on. You got um, it. I have, I have one quick Yankee point, and I also have a, a would you for you, Michael, so I can kick off would you Wednesday. Okay. Uh, the point that I want to make, is really just watching this Yankees team, the thing that I feel like I'm most impressed with and the biggest Soto effect, I guess, is how they're able to extend innings. Like, the amount of times that I've seen two out, <clears throat> walks, hits, RBIs. Like, I'm looking on baseball reference right now. <clears throat> the Yankees have scored 19 RBIs in 12 games with two outs. And a lot of times it's like Soto comes up with two outs, 
it's almost a 50% chance that you're going to get to judge. So it just seems like a way different feel and mentality for this whole team, and I think that starts with Soto. I agree. He's been He's been everything you wanted and much, much more. All right, so to my would you. So this is more like a would you rather not – so let's say you, you have to choose one of these, right? So would you rather have to kill a chicken every time you get into your car? So everybody will see it. Also, if you're in public, people will see you killing this chicken, and you have to do it every single time you step into your car. Mm -hmm. Or would you rather fight an orangutan to the death once a year? Chicken. You got to go with the chicken. I mean, I can't beat an orangutan. And I love chicken, so I'll make chicken cutlets out of it. Right. You can Listen, make it work. Neither's ideal because I think at some point you'll get arrested for all the chickens that you're killing just to get into your car. And then I wouldn't get in my car. I would but, go around it. Right. You have alternatives, but I got to fight a, an orangutan to the death every year? Right. As I get old, I'll, I'll be dead when I, I'm 70. I don't think I'd make it the first one. You've seen the stories about these. They'll rip your face these off. These apes. Yeah. That was a good. That was imaginative. It's dark, scary. Well, I've got some coming up in just a moment. But Peter, why don't you take us out? Um, I the Michael K. Show on Yes is brought to you in part by Bigelow Tea, who encourages you to grab a mug and tea proudly. It's amazing to think that my grandmother started Bigelow Tea right here in New York. And today, we're still a family company. And you have to remember, tea, that's all we do. So every cup counts. That means never compromising. My family won't let that happen. And our extended family, they give their all every single day. And our community, well, they expect that. I want a cup of Bigelow Tea to be a moment just for you. That's what I hope for. We all want to feel safe when traveling. That's why if you see something that feels suspicious, such as an abandoned bag or erratic behavior from a passenger, just call 911. You can call anonymously, and it's okay if it turns out to be nothing. Work together with the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey to keep our transportation facilities safe. Visit panynj.gov to learn more. On FanDuel Casino, you can play hundreds of games, like Buffalo, Buffalo. Fort Knox Cleopatra, Rich Little Piggies, and more. And you'll get up to $1,000 back in casino bonus on any first day net loss. That's what you get with the number one rated casino app. Sign up for FanDuel Casino and get up to $1,000 back to play it again. It's gonna feel like home. It's gonna be electric. This is the Yankees flexing their muscles. He has the right demeanor. The expectations to win a championship. This is the Yankees being the Yankees. One in six black men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in his lifetime, and we're more than twice as likely to die from the disease. But when it's caught early, it's highly treatable. For more than 30 years, PCF has funded cutting-edge research, helping patients live longer with fewer complications. Go to pcf.org slash knowyourrisk today to learn more about prostate cancer and how you can advocate for yourself. It's your health. It's your life. Deciding who to vote for is important. There are people, organizations, and foreign adversaries trying to trip us up, manipulate our views, and redirect or even discourage our vote. Whether it's bogus claims designed to stop us from voting or convincing digital fakes trying to sway our opinions, we all need to double check our facts. Watch out for phrases that frequently accompany political disinformation like make this go viral or conspiratorial statements like the media won't cover this. It's your vote, not theirs. Use it wisely. Be informed, not misled. 
For years, one company has battled to deliver business products the next day with no freight charges. Now, WB Mason, with their famous fleet of trucks and drivers, faces their biggest challenge, rescuing shipping and packaging buyers from expensive freight charges. That's right. Now, boxes, stretch film, and packaging tape are delivered the very next day at amazingly low prices. So, who do you call for fast delivery and no expensive freight charges? Who but WB Mason? Is it possible to be more capable and more practical? Be able to perform here and here. Make a statement while barely making a sound and command the road as well as what lies ahead. How we get there matters. Get exceptional offers at your local Audi dealer. You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stresses just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yep, tough day at work. Nice cruiser sorts you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Oh, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You gotta pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related, so... Ah, yee! Oh, that is a vibrating pain. Attention Yankee fans, Michael Kay here. This season on Prime, Amazon Prime members get access to watch exclusive Yankee games all year long, included with their Prime membership. To watch, click on the Prime Video app on your smart TV, phone, or computer. Sign in, and you're all set. Not a Prime member? Not a problem. Simply sign up for a 30-day free trial. To see the full schedule, scan the QR code here, or go to Amazon.com backslash Yankees. It's that easy. You know what's brilliant? Boring. Think about it. Boring is the unsung catalyst for bold. What straps bold to a rocket and hurdles it into space? Boring does. Great job, Astro Persons. Over. Boring is the jumping off point for all the unboring things we do. Boring makes vacations happen, early retirements possible, and startups start up. Because it's smart, dependable, and steady. All words you want from your bank. Taking chances is for skateboarding and gas station sushi, not banking. That's why PNC Bank strives to be boring with your money. The pragmatic, calculated kind of boring. Moving to Boca. Boring. That was a dolphin, right? It's simple, really. For nearly 160 years, PNC Bank has had one goal, to be brilliantly boring with your money, so you can be happily fulfilled with your life, which is pretty unboring if you think about it. Thank you, boring. professional sports uh, okay. athlete and just completely ugly or be really handsome and not good at sports. Mm. Oh, I'd be good at sports. I enjoy sports. It'd be fun. But well, you'd be so ugly. Work. Well, it depends. it depends how Don feels about his looks now. You know, if you already don't feel great about your looks. <laughs> I'm a decent sword, I think. The, if, if, how ugly are we talking about? I'm really ugly. George I don't want to name Give me, a person. Give a name. I'm naming somebody. Say, George Mirasan. Name someone at the radio yeah, station. Yeah, Name somebody at the radio station? It's not right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we know. have a pretty good-looking radio show. Yeah, I was just going to say, actually I do. We who, actually would do. The, who, who would be in the conversation? Like, we already say no that, you know, Rick DiPietro's good-looking, Alan Hahn's good-looking. Bart's good-looking. I think Gordon's underrated, uh, handsome. Especially See how you derailed classes. the whole thing, Peter? Now we're off of Wood and we're talking about how pe people at the station are good-looking. Sorry, um... So answer the I, question. I, you'd be like really ugly. Yeah, like Sam Cassell ugly. But Sam Cassell's not ugly. Yeah, he was not. Good. He was he was pretty bad. But he George made it George Foster. He made it work. George Foster. No, what he, about what's George face? Foster? If he just shaved the the sideburns, he would have been fine. Now this is the last one. But what about the guy? The, the, what's his face from the Bullets who looked like an alien? He was on the Wizards early two thousands. 
Can't you just say he's okay. fugly, okay? So, <laughs> you, you're great at sports and fugly or handsome and not. It, Don, Google ugliest basketball players. Oh, up. my goodness. So, um, I, I will say I'd rather, I guess I'd, if, if it means professional athlete, yeah. I will go with that. But, but hold on. What level professional? <laughs> I have to be star athlete. It has to be enough. Don, it has to be enough that the athleticism compensates for the looks. Are you off the bench on, the, on, the, on, a, on a good NBA team? Nah, I, I'll go with good looking. Would you rather hit the record, um, um, the rewind button? Would you rather have a rewind button for your life or a pause button? Hmm, I think I feel like I've heard this one before. I never used it. Peter. What are, we, we've had this conversation. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm rewinding. I would rather... But remember, I, if you rewind to like when your dad's alive... Don, then your children aren't here. Didn't, didn't he do this one with us exactly, exactly. already? He, he's, You're so lazy. You're such an embarrassment. <laughs> well, I was you know what? We Coming from you, that hurts because you know lazy and embarrassing. Mm -hmm. That's a Chrissy. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I'd still go with... I'd go with pause. I, I'd go with pause. I want to take this moment right now. All right. In a crisis, would you rather be the one who makes the decisions or follow someone else's lead? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you'd like to think that you'd want to make the decision, but that's a lot on you. Because if you if you're wrong, I I think I'd lay out. <laughs> you want to follow? Yeah. I'm being honest. Do you want that kind of guilt if you end up going down the wrong hallway? Yeah, but what if you follow somebody who, who doesn't care about the guilt and well, sends you down the wrong somebody hallway? else to blame. But then you'd be dead. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going for myself. I trust myself. All I'm, right. I'm going to be John McClane. I All right, so, so here's another looks one. Would you rather be really good looking and a colossal bore or just average looking and really funny and everybody thinks you're the best? I got to tell you, the, the latter gets the women. I think good looking gets the women too. No, 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 no. no. I've no, seen no, some no. really handsome men with yeah, but, beautiful yeah, women yeah, in there. You, I wouldn't want to spend a, a second with these guys. Yeah, but you know what? I, I find there's more examples of somebody that is is funny and charming and has a personality doing better than than the opposite. I, I think women are attracted to other things besides um, the, the physical See, look. It's not fair to ask Peter to because he is the latter. Every sitcom ever made, we always said, like, how do they make that work? <laughs> right? I just fired a scud, hurtful missile. I, I've heard it so many times. All right, this is this is a tough one. I've got to set it up the right way. We're talking about Popeye Jones, Peter? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Popeye Jones. <laughs> Would you... Rather have a relationship mm. with your wife's best friend. Always with this stuff. And you get $250 million. Mm. Your wife never finds out. You know and her friend knows. You get $250 million. Or not have a relationship with your wife's best friend and you don't get 250 I'm going to go with the latter, Michael. It's the only answer. No, it's not. I would take because the two fifty. I, I can't. I, but I that the guilt would just. Oh, kill me. stop it! Two fifty gets over well, a lot of guilt. <sighs> two hundred and fifty million dollars. It's double the guilt. Not only it's actually triple. Not only did I cheat on my wife, I cheated on my wife with her best friend. I made two hundred and fifty million dollars and didn't tell her about it. But I couldn't but live she, with that guilt. No, no. You, you'll be able to spend the money on her, make her life better. But she, I can't tell her I have this money, and I can't. Oh no, tell no, her you can I, tell her you have the money. But you can't tell her where oh, you got it. Oh, oh, well, that is, but it's still, you're still double down on cheating. No, no, no. You can and say, listen, can. we really hit a lot of bonuses at ESPN. I'm doing well. But I know. I'll know. Oh, so what if you know? Because it, because I'm just telling you, that's what guilt is. I would know, and it would bother well, me. Well, wouldn't you have guilt if you didn't take the 250 and set your kids up for life? Why do you sleep with somebody? What's wrong with you? It's just a physical act. Peter, I gave my answer. 
Um, I sort of checked out. <laughs> what? Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm getting, I'm getting overwhelmed with a lot of other stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm in and out, guys. I'm, just I'm being sorry. Honest. No, no, don't be. I'm I'm no, but I, I know Peter, and he would agree with me. Uh, no, no, would I, not. It, was, it was about, uh, all I know was, it was something about hooking up with your wife's friend. I know the answer is no, I'm not doing that. No, no, no you didn't hear all of it. If you're not going to play, then just duck out, because it's not just well, that. Did I didn't say, say hooking up with your wife's friend. I said, would you hook up with your wife's best friend and get $250 million? Your wife would never know. Only her friend and you would know. And that's, that's enough. I couldn't do it. No, yeah, okay. That's the whole jerks. thing. You wouldn't do How it. I would do it. Mad. I would, absolutely would hold, do it. Hold on. $250 million? But if your wife held hands with someone on a business trip, you'd kick her to the curb. But that would be if I found out. She would never find out. I said that's part of the thing. She'd never find out. You, you know, let me tell you something. You it's, know what? it's not what you want. You would live in with it every. Well, let me tell you, it, $250 million is not worth the feeling that you would have if you're a good person when you, your wife, and the best friend are hanging out. Yeah, so what? So you what? deal with it. You deal with it. So what? You might said. disagree, but you can't understand where we're coming no, from. No, you're both stooges, clods. Every man out there would do the same thing. I mean, you're so virtuous. First of all, I'm not doing what you want to say anymore because you're both liars. You will not say what you really feel because you don't want people to think poorly of you. I'm the only one who's honest here. Every man out there, even if they're happily married, would sleep with their wife's best friend to get $250 million, and your wife would never know. She would never be hurt. All you'd have to deal with is your guilt. Yeah, well, I've done it before. Not a great time. No. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and live my regular, mundane, decent Upper West Side life, Don, and live guilt free. I live with no guilt. It's the best life to live. You live without two hundred fifty million dollars too. Who cares? I'm doing it now. You, th you know what? When you do so, oh, this might be point God. <laughs> when you do something that requires a ton of guilt. Like, Don, you, you do something horrible, you would throw $250 million at it to fix it. But you can't, because it already happened. What guilt is it? Your wife would never know. But that's how all cheating works. There are people no, listening No, the right guilt now. isn't the thing that bothers you with cheating. It's the chance that you'll get caught. No, no, no you're no. saying that. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't say that. You said that, as, a, as an SNL skit once said. Right. Do you think sometimes guilt? Michael accidentally just opens the curtains to his soul, Don, and he just lets you look right in, doesn't he? Yeah, it's dark. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> and it's real, not phony like you two. Do, to, do your bat fitter ad. You sicken me. Is that me or Don? It's you. After months of hibernation, it's time to reemerge. Let spring inspire you to start fresh, too, behind the wheel of a new Ford SUV, featuring power that invigorates, capability to venture way off the grid, and tech that helps you forge a new path. It's a big world. Get out there and experience it. Now, returning lessees can get an Explorer for just $369 a month for 36 months, only at your local Ford stores. Hey, so I found a betting system that's really working great for me. So did I. What's yours? I set up an hour a week time limit on FanDuel. I can also set up wager limits. So I only bet what I can afford, and betting saves fun. Right. So what's your system? What's that? Your system. What's your system? <coughs> what is that? Every better has a system. Make FanDuel's responsible gaming tools a key part of yours. Welcome to Win Reality. Experience unlimited at bats from home any season, any time. See game speed pitches from more than 600 pitchers. Get ready for game time with game simulations. Face your friends in live competitions. And train like the pros with expert drills and metrics to track your progress. So when your moment comes, you'll be ready. Win Reality. Baseball uncaged. When I hit 80, I needed help around the home. A friend of mine told me to call Freedom Care, and they'll pay my granddaughter to take care of me. Funded by Medicaid, Freedom Care allows people to choose who provides their care, and the caregiver gets paid instantly after their shift. Life is sweeter with her around. Nana gave me so much joy as a child. Now it's my turn to return the love. Call now to find out benefits and pay, and how fast you can get started. If you've been diagnosed with mesothelioma or asbestos lung cancer, 
Choose the right law firm by asking, what are your highest verdicts? What experience do you have? How many lawyers are on staff? How many clients have you represented? Speak to Weitz and Luxembourg at 800-LAW-6789 to get unmatched answers. It's the biggest financial decision of your life. Call 800-LAW-6789 or visit misowin.com. you to visit the revamped Veterans History Project website, where first-hand accounts shared by U.S. military veterans are accessible to the public. Performing a search of the collection is easy. First, go to loc.gov vets. Click Explore the Collections. Scroll down to Search the VHP Collections and click. Make sure you're searching this collection, and with simple keywords, you can find what you're looking for. Visit loc.gov vets today. forward. Don't drive distracted. But, but then why did you ask it if the answer is so obvious? No, because I know that you guys are not being honest with it, no, so it's no fun. No, because I think it's very revealing on the other side. You can't understand. Listen, if I'm destitute, if I'm living on the street, you do whatever you can for your family. But I'm making a good living, Michael. I don't need money that I have to do that to myself. And I know for myself that that was the wrong thing to do. And Nancy's best friend is somebody that we spend holidays with. They live down the street from us. I couldn't live with that guilt. How, why is that so difficult to understand? Because you most may disagree of the time, with it. You guys just say the politically correct thing. You're not real. Because I know you both, too. Maybe this on this one, you really legit. Most of the time, you're tiptoeing around it. You don't want your wife to know what you really think. So you just you just say, you say the politically correct thing. It's no fun. We're not doing it anymore. I'm done. I'm done. Taking your ball and going home. Yeah, huh? I'm taking my ball and going home. It's really sad. And because, embarrassing. Uh, listen, every question I ask, well, that's not good enough. What a stupid question. What a dumb question. Well, we're done. I'm done. I'm not good enough at it. We're over. So if you if you love Would You Wednesday and now you're sad that it's gone, blame those two. Don't well, blame no, me. Don't I'm blame finished. Us. You're the one that's pulling the plug. I'm pulling the it. plug because it's not fun anymore. Well, no, it doesn't matter what you think. It matters what the audience thinks. No, I'm the one doing do this it. for you. But it, 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 I'm not getting the feedback that I need to make it good. Well, we just disagreed with you on this one. Yeah, it was, we I'm just good. I'm good. I'm, I'm being totally serious. I'm good. That's it. Oh. You just heard the last Would You Wednesday. Oh, All right, so, Don, let's that's talk fine, about it's the... It's your fault. Uh, okay, blame me. Whatever. I don't care. Gutless. It's over. And blame me. No I'm pulling the that's plug. That's what gutless is. <laughs> it's over. You'll never hear another Woodrow Wednesday again. Done. Uh, Rangers and Islanders. Islanders with a big win, but there's a controversy in there as well. Laviolette felt that a hit was was improper. He's the only guy, Don, uh, it, it, who feels that it was improper. It is impre it, 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 Pelic is at, is is in the neutral zone. Is Zabanajad is is gesturing. He's not looking, and he runs into the shoulder of Pelic and goes down. And and those are the worst types of hits, Michael, when you don't brace for them. You're not prepared right, to get so hit. Right, so Laviolette is blaming Pelic. Yeah, he believes that it was intentional. It was a vicious uh, shoulder that he threw, or elbow, is what he said. So on the MSG Network, the home of the Rangers, yes. Henrik Lundqvist, Ranger legend, said it's not, he, he, he didn't blame exactly. Pelic at all. Dave Maloney, who I thought we were going to lose at the end of the game, screaming at Kelly Sutherland for not calling the cross-check that Dobson threw at the end of the game on Trocheck, said it was an accident. So, uh, Rick Carpinella, who's covered the the, uh, the Rangers up until recently, since 1979, tweeted, I, I, it looked like an accident to me. I can't find anybody that agrees with it except, you know, a bunch of Ranger fans who want to jump on the Islanders, and I get it, you hate the Islanders. 
Now, Peter Laviolette was a defenseman, and maybe maybe he tried doing something like that. Maybe he knows a way to be able to stand still and if, if inflict a vicious uh, hit on the head of Mika Zibanejad. I don't know. I saw it, and it looked like just an accident. Now, do I think the Dobson penalty should have been called? Absolutely. But, you know, I, I just saw an accident, Michael, so I, I completely disagree with Peter Laviolette. I don't know what his ulterior motive is. I don't think it's a good idea to incite something for Saturday when there's so much on the line for both of these teams. Sounds like another Rempy moment. You know, but, but, but don't get caught up in that garbage. I mean, it, it's, you've got bigger fish to fry here. You've got three games to try to get right for the playoffs. Try to win the conference and give yourself the best seating in the first round, not worrying about trying to get revenge on something that, honestly, Michael, to me, I'm being completely truthful, looked like an accident to me. Anthony said the same thing. J Joe Mick, Dave Maloney, uh, Henrik Lundqvist, everybody that's completely invested in the Rangers, it looked like an accident to me. Now, you know, Peter wasn't completely over the top, but he called it vicious. So, he now they had off today. So I don't know if he saw a chance to look at it again and would uh, retract it. Maybe he's just talking about it in real time. I don't know why he told us to look at it. I looked at it and I saw an accident. Did you see it? Yeah, I I, I don't what understand what he's yelling about. I, I just, uh, they, he wasn't looking. He, neither of them were looking at each other, and they slammed into each other. Now, did Pellick sense it and figure, I'm going to stand here and have him run into me? I, I may, if that's the case, then he's obviously playing, you know, three-dimensional checkers or chess or whatever that I can't even understand. But I didn't see anything vicious. But... Peter saw something differently, so he's either making it up to try to stir something in his team or he's looking at it at a completely different level than I am. And listen, he should. He's one of the best coaches. He's won over 800 games. He's won a Stanley Cup. Don't look at me. I I'm just a guy observing it from afar. But, you know, Dave Maloney and Joe Micheletti and Henrik Lundqvist and, you know, people that have played this game and have, were defensemen in this game, Thought it was an accident, so I, I'm not sure where Peter's coming from. All right, so let, let's take away the thing that, you know, is the elephant in the room. Um, the Rangers lose, but um, the Hurricanes beat the Bruins, which is what you said the Ranger fans should be rooting for. Right. The Islanders get a victory, so where do we stand now in the Rangers trying to clinch and the Islanders trying to nail down that playoff spot? Well, the reason why you wanted Carolina to win, even though they gained ground on the Rangers, was because you want to keep Boston at bay. Boston was 4-1 home to Carolina. So the Rangers have a three-point lead on Boston for winning the conference, is what you want. You want to be able to get that eight seed and avoid having to play Tampa in the first round. And the Rangers have three games left. Boston has three games left. And Carolina's got three games left. And the Rangers have the three-point lead. And the Rangers right now have the tiebreaker. So they're in pretty good shape. If they win two of the next three, it doesn't matter what happens. They're going to lock it all up. And it'll be over. And they've got a game against a, a, a struggling Philadelphia team tomorrow at the Garden. Then, of course, Rangers and Islanders at the Garden. And the Rangers finish up against Ottawa, who's already done. So Rangers are, despite a really, a, I thought, a lax first period, uh, a much better second and third period. Credit the Islanders. They found a way to win the game and hold on, although there's some issues there because their penalty kill is the worst in the league, and they almost blew a 3 nothing lead. Fact is, they got the win. Rangers are in really good shape. Just got to get better starts, Michael. They give up the first goal constantly, and their worst period by far is their first period where they've got a plus-one goal differential, and they're in the 20s in the other two. So they, there's a few things they need to clean up, Michael, but I thought they showed some heart coming back into the game. Good on the Islanders getting a win. Islanders are in third place in the Metropolitan Division with 87. So they've got a two-point lead on Washington who won last night. They've got a uh, three-point lead on Pittsburgh. All those teams have 78 games played. Uh, the only thing, the Islanders don't have the tiebreaker against anybody, so they're going to have to win outright. But they control their own destiny. they got a game against Montreal coming up tomorrow. So I think the Islanders are in really good shape to hold on to that three seed. They've won five in a row, so... Now, on them, and we'll is, see if they there, hold on. is there a goaltender controversy with the Islanders? Because uh, they didn't start me. their main guy yesterday. Well, Varlamov's been better. He's started five of the last seven. He was terrific last night, Michael. He made some amazing saves in that first period when the Rangers were trying to come back, including some big saves early in the third when it was a 3-2 game. So I know that they gave the contract extension to uh, um, Sorokin. I know he's supposed to be their number one. But, Michael, you're, you're, you're trying to get in. And I would trust Patrick Waugh, a Hall of Fame goaltender, 
to be able to determine who his goaltender should be moving forward. So you don't worry about contracts. You don't worry about feelings. Who gives us the best chance? And right now, I think I'm riding Varlamov until uh, until otherwise directed. Maybe you start Sorokin against Montreal just because that, that's a team that's already out of it. But I'm going to start Varlamov on Saturday against the Rangers based on how he played last night. And if he steals the job away, then more power to him. What are you going to do, Michael? I mean, you're not worried about contracts and feelings at this point. You're just trying to get into the playoffs. Hey, remember when Joe Girardi pinch hit for Alex Rodriguez? You, oh, yeah. you, 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 I mean, these are, the playoffs are on the line. You play the best players. Guys that are doing the best. And, and Varlamov is not nobody, Michael. He's been to the playoffs with the Washington Capitals. He's more experienced. So it wouldn't be that crazy a thought. But, hey, the Islanders has been up and down. You know, win six in a row, lose six in a row. They've won five in a row. Most of those wins have come with uh, Simeon Varlamov as the goaltender. To me, that's 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 an easy that's an easy answer. Well, let's go to the phones. Ryan in Arizona. Ryan. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. You got um, it. I had a, a would you, but I guess we'll scrap that since uh, it's a hot topic now. But I wanted to call you guys out. Um, I hate to do it, but, you know, you guys just spoiled the heck out of the Curb series finale. And, you know, that show's been around since before 9-11, right? Like, it's, and that show just ended. Ryan, it ended three Sunday. Days. Not even three uh, days ago. It's Wednesday. Yeah, well, how long were we supposed ago. to wait to what talk we about it? To because do, if man. we waited longer to talk about it, it wouldn't be relevant. Yeah, there's got to be someone. Under a rock. But Ryan, like, hey, Ryan, hey, this is on you. This just, is on you. You've had two gonna... days to watch it. It is true. It's true. It's and I, we I didn't, it's we my, didn't even tell you how the show ended. We did not tell you how the show ended. I heard you guys talking about surprise people and i just i had to mute it for like five minutes so i'm not sure how oh. much you spoiled it but no we didn't we didn't, we didn't, we didn't tell you the ending. ending you have no idea how it no, was spoiled we revealed some things ryan but but give me a break it, it happened on sunday it's already wednesday yeah, michael's mood. right when are we supposed to talk not about it mood. after it's out of yeah, the we'll, cycle we'll wait three months and hey. then we'll start talking about it I, it'll be a, a non sequitur uh, and they'll go why are they talking about curve three months after it happened stop it it's Michael, on you I I, we get, well i didn't even talk about it monday when i wanted to yesterday when i wanted you we waited till wednesday if we spoiled it for you that's on you it's not on us i don't know if this is right or wrong michael but i'd feel uncomfortable if today was monday and that's right? why we didn't do it and because yeah, i like all right maybe because i didn't see it you know because but but at some point if it's that important to you michael that you had to see it then uh, at, at some point you'll be like all right now it's on me so monday i'm not willing to go there but we already went through Monday, Tuesday. It's now, you know, it, it was after 3 o'clock on Wednesday. If you haven't seen it by now, I'm sorry. It's kind of on you. And also, you know why we didn't do it Tuesday either? Because, you know what? If you're working and then you want to see the NCAA uh, men's final, okay. No. Then you didn't have time. What, what were you doing yesterday that you couldn't watch an hour of it? Star, it's but, but, on you, man. But, yeah, that, see, that when I say it's on you, all right, I get it. You're busy. But at some point you have to say to yourself, listen, I can't get mad at somebody for revealing it. We're far enough away from the actual finale. It's on me. I should see it. I, I, I wanted to. I made a point of trying to see it before yesterday's show, Michael, because I knew at some point we're going to need to talk about it. Now, if I didn't see it, then, you know, listen, talk about it, man. It's on me, man. i got to figure out the time to be able to carve it out. If it's that important to you that we're actually spoiling the finale. And it's I'm not, not like built for this anymore. JR. I'm it's not, not built for this. Busy. I'm just not built for it anymore. I'm not. It's sickening. You're always going to piss somebody off. We waited three days to talk about it, and this guy saying I spoiled. We didn't tell you how it ended. Now I'm going to tell you how it ended. He was Ooh. in jail. That's how it ended. Now I really spoiled it. And he's complaining, and all we did was revealed a couple of cameos. He said he shut it off before we revealed anything real. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll let you know that Allison Janney's in it. And Craig Kilborn's in it. Sorry. Not Kilborn. Not, no, what did I? Kinnear. Kinnear. Now you ruined it for me. I, did I miss Kilborn? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you didn't. Let's go to Lou in a Brooklyn. bad mood, please. I, I need you till. Well, I got you till 6 30, right? Yes. Hang hey, Lou. Hello? Lou. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. So, hi. I've been waiting to get on the show for a while. I have a question about Juan Soto. Okay. So I, he's on a sick pace right now. Do you think they'll pay him more than Judge? Because Ju I know Judge captain, Judge what, has 42.6. 
Do you think they'll give him more than Judge? Of course, if they're going to keep no. him. Of course, they have to. Judge makes an average of uh, $40 million a year. He's 360 for for nine years. Let me tell you this, Lou. If they offered Soto 360 for nine years, he would laugh. He's going to get 50 million a year because yeah, he's so much younger. And, and this is no knock on Judge. It's it's three years later. It, it's just the way it's going to be. He's 25 years old. If they hold firm that no one's going to make more than Judge, then they're not going to get any more big players until Judge's contract's over. Let me ask you, Michael, if they're the same age, who would you give the most money to? I might give it to Judge because he's, he's a better defender. Mm. Although Juan Soto plays more. I think I'd give it to Judge. But at least it's a debate. It is a debate because he'll hit more home runs. They'll hit for about the, the, he'd probably hit for a higher average. Yeah. And he's a better defender. Judge is a people. I, I think they've lost sight of it. Judge is a great player, and the only mark against him is he's getting older, as we all are. Yeah, but but Soto might not even have hit his prime yet. Right. He's not. He's not. He's he's going to get this money when he's twenty five. I mean, what would you offer Soto then? Thirty five a year? He would. No. Scott Boris no would shot. laugh. No shot. When you got a guy across town 12 miles away that's willing to give him whatever he wants. You know, another would you that I had, it's more of a baseball one. And it, it can only be asked to a Met fan. So I'm going to ask you, Don. If you're a Met fan, a real true Met fan, so take take the radio host out of it. Right. A true Met fan who loves his team, you could only have one. Would you sign Alonzo or Soto? You could only oh, have one. No, that would be Soto. But there are a lot of Met fans that love right. Alonzo. Because you get caught up in he's a homegrown guy, and we get into the I, I get so many Met fans. Without question, the biggest rant I ever had was the Ed Crane pool. Right. Because it hit home with, with Met fans because because there's an air of truth to it. Because there are no all time Mets. They all get traded or they went and acquired them or they got hurt, you know, before they were able to finish their careers, like David Wright. So there's that pull of we haven't had a guy that they drafted and they curated and they bring up and he becomes a star and he spends 15, 20 years here and retires. The they never had that. So there's that pull. I get it. But there would be a better baseball team built around Juan Soto than uh, Pete Alonso. Because even though Soto's not a great defender, neither is Alonzo. They play different positions. They do different things. You know, you know Alonzo's going to hit a lot more home runs than Soto. But is he going to get on base as much as Soto? Is he going to have the impact to the entire order the way Soto does? Is he as young as Soto? Uh, these are all the things they'd have to take into consideration. It'd be tough. I want, I want, them, I want to keep them both. And, and, and the feeling is that with this ownership... It, they, they should have the money to be able to keep both. But if you ask me who who is the better player and what gives you a better chance to win, I, I think it's Soto, don't you? I would. I think he's a better player. They're both not great defenders. But Soto's going to get on base at like a 420 clip. Um, his OPS is going to be higher than Pete. Again, the only thing that you, if... I mean, this, this is a choice the Mets are going to make because I don't think they could sign both. They could, but they won't. And what's more important, a corner outfielder or a first baseman? Mm. I think you, you got to go with Soto, no. despite your love for, no. for Alonzo. Also, Alonzo's older. Now, now, this is what Stearns is saying. He doesn't care that he was drafted by the Mets. He doesn't care about forever Met. He doesn't want to pay somebody a dime more than he thinks they're worth. And he is going to ask for way more money, Michael, than Stearns is willing to pay him. So it's not a case of the Mets can't afford it. Sure, they can't afford it. But Stearns is loath to give extra money to a player for all the ancillary things that he doesn't care about. He cares about giving a player the money he believes he's worth. And clearly, by the way things are going, Michael, he, he doesn't believe he's worth the money that, a lot, that uh, Pete's going to be asking for. And, and this guy and is running the show. But, but I also can't blame him. Because I do think Alonzo is going to be asking for more money than a lot of other general managers are willing to pay. There's a very good possibility, Michael, this can go into next season where he's going to sit around like Blake Snell and not, and, and not be signed. Because I don't know if there's any general managers out there that are going to pay him the money that he's going to want. If he's going to want $50 million a year, Michael, nobody's going to give him that. Who? 
uh, Alonzo. Oh, he's going to ask him uh, if he's. If he, I don't know how much I, he's going to ask. He probably for. wants thirty. I don't think he's going to get yeah, that. See, Freddie but, Freeman doesn't. But, make but I don't 30. think he's going to be asking for thirty, Michael. I think he's going to be asking for more than that. Oh, he's, there's no chance. There's, well, there's then, no chance. But that's what I'm saying is is that he's going to ask for top dollar. Well, he should. He's a right. great player. But I mean, I think that. The analytic people that run front offices, they have a value on first baseman. The best first baseman out there makes the most money is Freddie Freeman, and he's still a great player. And you probably would choose Freeman over Alonzo for what he can do. Great defender, hitting over 300, clutch, the whole deal, champion. And, I mean, maybe the Mets would, like, swallow hard and give him 30. But mm -hmm. if he's looking for 40, I mean, did you see the market this year? No. Yeah. I'm not getting 40. And maybe sad, some team will give him 30. Maybe uh, the Cubs will give him 30. Maybe the Mets would push it and give him 30. But 40, is it's in his dreams. This is going to go because there's a lot of similarities between him and Barkley. And that's probably the way it's going to go the same way. It's a, it's a great comp. It's a great comp. All right, we'll come back in just a moment. You're listening to the Michael K. Show on Yes and 9870 ESPN. everything your restaurant can do with tools from Square. Get a POS that connects to a KDS so you can handle orders ASAP. Reach more customers with online ordering and QR codes. Use pocket-sized hardware so you can turn tables faster. And get one account for everything so you can take care of it all and take it easy, too. Get your all-in-one restaurant system and sign up at Square.com today. See everything your store can do with tools from Square. Your inventory automatically restocks, so you never run low. Your online store stays open 24-7, so you're always ready to sell. Your payments are processed in seconds, so customers can breeze through checkout. And with one account to manage it all, you've got more time for taking time out. Get your all-in-one retail system by signing up at Square.com today. Hey, rental? Yep. You? Yeah. You know your shoes untied. No. Oh. Don't let a boxy suit ruin your night. Red from the BlackTux.com. What do you do with 72 hours, 18 holes, four friends, and one wedding? The absolute most. for however you fit. Bonobos. When finding your perfect pair of glasses is made easy and affordable, you can spend your time doing other things, like riding bikes, jumping off cliffs, or just enjoying the view. But it all starts with seeing, and that's where Warby Parker comes in. Visit a store or try five pairs for free. My favorite babysitter is Annalisa. She's pretty good. She's like my grandma. She says, hola. She plays with me. She helps you feel better. Bugs and insects are all healthy for you. Amelia took us to the beach. She teaches me some gymnastics. We like color. We draw flowers. And then we go skateboarding. From babysitters to nannies to daycare centers. Find all the care you need at care.com. I'm asking you to support the Tunnel to Towers Foundation in their efforts to deliver mortgage-free homes to catastrophically injured service members, Gold Star, and fallen first responders families with young children, as well as eradicating homelessness amongst our veterans. Everybody knows where the money's going, every single dollar. God bless you. Please contribute $11 a month to support their efforts by visiting T2T.org. Everywhere but the seat. The seat is leather. Alan, we get it. You love your bike. We do, too. That's why we're America's number one motorcycle insurer. But do you have to wedge it into everything? This reminds me of my bike. Look how the brushstrokes follow the line on the gas tank. I had no idea this was a motorcycle exhibit. 
final stone of the championship. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. Well, Roger, this is looking good. We believe every moment in sports should be epic. <laughs> Is that curling? No. This morning's news, curling fever has taken over the world. So whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at that 365. After months of hibernation, it's time to reemerge. Let's bring Inspire You to start fresh, too, behind the wheel of a new Ford SUV, featuring power that invigorates, capability to venture way off the grid, and tech that helps you forge a new path. It's a big world. Get out there and experience it. Now, returning lessees can get an escape for just $1.99 a month for 24 months, only at your local Ford stores. Yankees, tonight, coverage begins at 6.30, only on Prime. The Library of Congress invites you to visit the revamped Veterans History Project website, where first-hand accounts shared by U.S. military veterans are accessible to the public. Performing a search of the collection is easy. First, go to loc.gov vets. Click Explore the Collections. Scroll down to Search the VHP Collections and click make sure you're searching this collection and with simple keywords you can find what you're looking for visit loc.gov vets today we asked seniors how to prevent medicare scams if you get a phone call do not talk to the person never ever give out your medicare number just hang up i check my medicare statements monthly to report medicare fraud contact the senior medicare patrol in your state <laughs> Eyes forward. Don't drive distracted. Been a great day. 1-800-919-3776. Yankees win last night. They've won four in a row. They have the best record in baseball. The Mets made um, a, a comeback that fell short, but it was certainly yeah. thrilling. Pete Alonso struck out against Iglesias on a, on a pretty good changeup with Lindor as the time run on base. Don, they were down 6 nothing. Uh, by the way, we're right now in the middle of the Diamond Notes brought to you by London Jewelers. They're down 6 nothing, and they made a spirited try. So they're showing some fight against the Braves. And the Braves might be uh, ripe for the picking. I don't know if that, that will impact the Mets. Maybe it impacts the Phillies. If they lose Spencer Spr Strider, who's supposed to start today, and he can't, and he might right. have to undergo Tommy John surgery, that is a gigantic loss for Atlanta. Yeah, I'm not, not impressed by them. Um, that much at all. Again, it's very early in the season. But what, we, what you're seeing with the Mets here early on, Michael, is that they're starting to get better offensively. They they just not, they don't have the pitching. They just don't. And and Senga... And Senga uh, goes on the 60-day IL today. Yeah, so that means he's pretty much done through May. I guess he's eligible May 27th, and then, you know, how long it'll take for him to get back into the rotation. It doesn't sound good, Don. No, it doesn't. You know, but, they, but they, they're starting to hit a little bit. Nimmo with another hit. Um, you know, Alonzo was able to get the uh, the rally going with the three-run home run. Another hit for Beatty. Um, so I think they'll be okay offensively. They're not going to be a juggernaut, but they're going to be carried by their offense. But they just don't. You know, Hauser's a nice pitcher. Michael gives you five innings but gives up five runs. Um, they just don't have the starting pitching. They're not going to give you a lot of innings, which means they're really going to have to rely on this bullpen, which outside of Diaz isn't really overly special. So for everything to kind of come together, they're going to have to outslug their opponents. And you're going to get nights like you did last night. You know, so it's funny. The first two games are kind of the same, where they, they were able to complete the comeback the first night, but this time they weren't able to complete the comeback because... You keep spotting teams' early leads. You, you can't rely on coming back like that all the time. You're just not built like that. So I'll, I, I'll take the split if they can get it. But, you know, right now, Michael, the starting pitching is just, it's going to be a roller coaster ride every night, whether they're going to be able to hold on. And, and then, you know, yesterday we find out that J.D. Martinez has to get an injection in his back. Mm -hmm. And, uh, listen, I didn't want to be right on this, but I knew I was going to be. 
Guys could work out all they want on their own. All they want on their own. It's not the same as organized spring training. So J.D. Martinez, I don't know what he was doing. And even uh, Carlos Mendoza said yesterday, well, I mean, nobody's worked harder to come back. He's taken 80 swings. This is from probably sitting on his couch to take 80 swings. Now, he had yeah. a back issue last year, ended up having a good season. Right. But you're paying this guy for the full six months. He will not play in April. Nope. And you hope that he's going to be okay yeah. in May. Why do people su it There has to be a cutoff point where we go, I'm not getting involved. I'm not getting involved. Look how Snell pitched in his first game. A three-inning pitcher. Even at his best, he's a five-inning pitcher. And, and Michael, he's hurting himself because it's a one-year contract. Yep. So what is he going to get if he ends up having half a season? Now, he did get a shot when he was with the Dodgers last year. And had a good year. But that was before the season. So. Right. Uh, so they've, like you said, they've lost April. Maybe the shot works. He ends up having a monster, you know, May through, and we'll see if that can happen. But right now, you're a non-entity, you know. So Stewart, you know, plays, uh, but clearly they'd be better with Martinez in there. And when are you going to get him? You know, you're already under 500. You're four and seven, and it doesn't look like you're going to have him anytime soon. What they say, uh, you know, the three to five days. So yeah, you know, and then the shot. It, it's yeah, you're probably w looking at May first. And, wh and where are you going to be come May 1st? And, and, and that's best-case scenario. Yeah. And now with the Senga news, that's awful. They're, they're pitchers short anyway. Yeah. And he's their, he's their Garrett Cole. Now, he's not on that level, but he's their ace. He was going to start opening day. You've lost your ace. Who are your, who are your big-time pitchers on the Mets? Well, Quintana still, I think, could be a good pitcher. He was signed to be a good pitcher on a team that thought it can contend. So you've got Quintana tonight, Severino uh, to finish out the series tomorrow afternoon. So uh, that's that's the top of your rotation. So hopefully they can at least earn a split. Then you got Kansas City, and you try to see if you keep your head above water. But that's going to be the problem. We knew it going in. Until Senga came back, did they have enough starting pitching? And are they get, And they've already lost games because the bullpen is just too light when starting pitchers don't give you enough. And, and you, got, you, you got nothing um, back on the Monday. And your bullpen was was spent from the weekend. It's going to be tough. You can't you can't have pitchers go five innings every single night, Michael, and expect your bullpen to hold up. And, and if you think away the way the bullpen is built, okay, they don't have a big starting staff, so you're not going to get length out of them. So you need a good bullpen. Um, Ottavino, I, I I don't know what Adam has left. Um, and then you've got the closer, who's great. Mm -hmm. But he can't pitch every day. So so no. when Clay Holmes can't pitch, like he, if he's pitched two or three days in a row, you can go to Ian Hamilton. You you can go to Nick Birdie. There's people that you could turn to that are viable alternatives. Who, the Mets can't go to that guy. There is right. not that guy. Right. You're going to have Adam Adovino close the game? But even, even the Yankees, Michael, if every single night you were getting four or five innings from your starting pitchers, it would, it would come to roost at but some point. But you know what? They were doing that for the first eight games, and the bottom line is they have a deep bullpen. The Mets have right. a very oh, yeah. shallow uh, no, bullpen absolutely. and bad starters. Uh, absolutely. Well, listen, Tehran couldn't give them much. What was it two and two-thirds? Yep. You know, and, I, I, and and they stretched Hauser yesterday. You know, They raved yeah. about the fact that he went five innings. Well, he took one for the team. He gave him yeah. six runs. Yeah, it took one for the team, and still you had to go out there and get 12 outs. Right. Strange. Also, big move in baseball. Uh, the number one prospect in the entire sport, Jackson Holiday, called up by the Orioles. Maybe the Orioles see the Yankees off to a great start. They say, mm. let's get this kid up here. And he is a special, special player. Looks like he's going to play second base for the Orioles. He's a shortstop, but they already have a shortstop in Gunnar Henderson. They're so loaded. The Orioles are really the team that you have to worry about in the American League East. And his career is going to start tonight. That's the... Um, Diamond Notes brought to you by London Jewelers. Visit London Jewelers today at any of their seven locations, including the Americana Mall and the Mall at Short Hills. Let's go to the phones. Uh, let's go to let's go to Sal in North Carolina. Sal. Hey guys, um, Don, just allow me a, a minute to to rant a little bit. Um, as a Rangers fan, I was upset there was no call on the Trojan that kid. But what makes me more upset is the non-rule. The NHL has that a game can't end on a defensive penalty or an active power play. So let's say the evening Rangers got a two-minute or a five-minute power play last night. They would have only 10 seconds to try and tie the game. I think that's ridiculous, and I think the game is the best it's ever been. But the NHL needs to be more like the NFL and the NBA that a game can't end on a defensive penalty. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Um, I mean, if you were the team on defense, you can basically bear hug offensive yeah. players in the final seconds so they can't score and have no fear because time will run out. And even if a penalty was called, there's no time or little time left for the offense to even attempt to score in the power play. I mean, that rule has to change. Yeah. Not just because I'm a Rangers fan, but like, no, who, you're I'm, right. Say, um, I'm the Rangers in the Eastern Conference Finals, and I'm up four, four three in Game Seven. There's five seconds left, and all you got to do is bear hug Malkin and Crosby and anybody else on the ice, and time runs out. Hey, even if penalties called, the game's over. Yeah, and and the reason that they're going to give you is is a lame reason, Sal. And that's well. There's a, it's a 60 minute game. Uh, how, well, how, what do we do? Is it going to be to say that there were 62 minutes played? Yeah, that's how you handle it. I mean, it's an easy fix. You're right. And again, we're coming from a Ranger perspective because of what that situation would be. But think about it, Michael. You, you're down to the last 10 seconds, right? And there's a scoring opportunity. You know, behind, yeah, why, why not bear hug them, take them down? Even if there's a penalty. So what? There's only 10 seconds left in the game. Now, obviously, if you do that on a breakaway, there's going to be a penalty shot, so you wouldn't do that. But if the puck's in the corner and Panarin's trying to come out, and you drag them down with five seconds left. What's what? No harm, no foul. That's five seconds. That's barely enough time. They're going to drop the puck, and you maybe maybe if you're lucky, you get a shot. It, it's, it'd be worth dragging them down. Now, would you do that if they called a penalty with five seconds left and the full two minutes had to be served? Like, that would change things. And now, you, but I, the game would have to be extended is what you're saying. Yeah, you would have to. And, that, and that's their rub. It's like, how do you extend the game? Like, uh, in football, a game cannot end on a defensive penalty, but it's understood. All right, there'll be one more untimed play. But you'd be literally making the game longer than 60 minutes that's not tied. So is that enough of a reason not to put that rule in place? It's it's it it's, it almost sounds like an unsolvable problem, right? Well, unless you're willing to say under those circumstances we are going to lengthen our game. That's un now you can lengthen a game by five minutes when it's tied, or more than that if you're in the playoffs. But are are are, are you messing with the integrity of the sport, Michael? That now you're actually playing a game longer than it was meant to be played. It's, but, it's a tough call. I don't know. I, but, I don't even have an answer. I don't but know. But I'm with the caller is that, but you also don't want to have the game be compromised where it's okay to tackle somebody because there's no punishment for it of, because you're not going to so, serve the full two minutes. So in the final five seconds, an opportunity can be squelched and it not really cost me anything because really when you're down to that many seconds, Michael, what good, what good would the power play have been last night if there was a penalty with five seconds left to go? Right, right. But in those five seconds, that penalty might have stopped an opportunity for the Rangers or the Islanders to win the game. So I see what Sal is saying. It's interesting. Mets Braves tonight postponed because of rain is going to be made up on September 26th. So that's a positive baseball. for the Mets. Yeah, no, no, that's good, but... You know, I got nothing tonight. There's no Knicks. There's no hockey. Well, how about one Yankee baseball? I got a nice, uh, well, no, that's fine, but th that's not my team. God, I hate, th this is when I hate baseball. You hate no dome. Yeah, and yeah. the reason there's no dome is because of baseball short-sightedness. That's a new ballpark, Michael. Yeah. doesn't rain in Atlanta. It rains a lot in Atlanta. Well, yeah, and it's a new ballpark. How old is that ballpark? Five years? Six years old? Not if even. that, yeah. Let's go to Steve in Pearl River. Hi, Steve. Steve. Hello, Steve. Steve. Yo, yo, Steve. Michael and I have a, 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 a love for Pearl River. Right. I dated a girl from Pearl River for five years. And I went to a place that had 10 cent drafts when I was going to college. You know that's, what? That's magic. Equal thrills. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Sean in Somerville. Sean. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, Sean. Sean. Listener, first time caller. Oh, cool. Welcome aboard. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Like you read about. Oh, awesome. So I just had to call it. I don't know if maybe I'm overreacting, but I can't understand what the Yankees are doing moving Volpe up to leadoff. The kid's batting arguably top 10 in Major League Baseball. Why mess with him right now? Clearly in a groove. Well, I, I, I see what you're saying, but Boone said something yesterday. He said, you know, when you look 10 years down the line, Anthony Volpe is going to be a leadoff hitter most of his career. Maybe they feel that it's time now because Glaber has not hit. Glaber has been a black hole at the top of the lineup. So if you get Volpe on base, followed by Soto and Judge, and then Stanton, who's hot, they're just they're just putting more people on base and getting Volpe more at bats. What what about it bothers you? You think it's just upsetting the 
the, the good mojo that he has? No, I just think, I mean, he's finally confident in his swing, it looks like, right? So he finally has guys on base. He's putting the ball in play. You know, at least half the time he's stepping up to the plate. Let him drive in some runs. Why not ride the hot wave and try to fix and not fix the cold wave with Glaber? It's, it's, you know what, I can't, I can't sit here and say you're wrong. I mean, there, there's definitely two sides to this coin here. Uh, I think that he will ultimately be a leadoff hitter, and maybe the Yankees feel that he is a completed uh, player right now by the way he's hitting and the way he's playing. Why not move him there well, now? DJ yeah. LeMahieu was the guy who was supposed to be the leadoff guy. So Glaber Torres, it's just, it, you know, it, it's certainly just been a stopgap situation. So maybe this is just until DJ comes back, or maybe he performs so well and continues to get on base that they keep him there forever. Well, well, if the plan was to have him be a leadoff hitter and you feel like he's ready to do it, then why wait? Well, I guess what Sean is saying, he's doing so well at six, why mess? Well, because I think they have to see through the start, Michael. Right. Um, again, I'm not going to take anything away from what the Yankees have accomplished, but you look at the record of the Astros, the Diamondbacks, and the Marlins. They're, they're all losing teams. Now, the Yankees have contributed to that. But maybe you caught Houston at the right time. Maybe the defending National League champions aren't going to be all that good this year. You know, so I, I think the Yankees look at an 8-2, 10-2 uh, record, and they should be thrilled with it. But they also shouldn't just think that, okay, we're, we're good. The plan's the plan. And I don't think anybody's going to look at 12 games and have it derail the plan. If he's ready to do it, and they just wanted to see this sample size, to see that he was ready to do it, then do it. I don't think they look at their start as mojo. It's all part of the plan. Right, right. But I think the plan for him to be a leadoff hitter is in the future. So has he has he progressed enough at the age of 22? I mean, he's so much of a different hitter than he was last huh? year. Has he progressed enough that, okay, now it's time for him to lead off? Or is this temporary till DJ comes back? I, I don't know. Now, Anthony is more of a, a prototypical leadoff hitter, especially if he gets on base a lot, because he can run. He could steal you 40 bases. DJ can't. Gleyber Torres can't. So... Volpe is a prototypical leadoff hitter if he gets on base a lot. Last year, his on-base percentage was 295. That's not good enough. But this year, he's hitting, you know, high 300s, 400, and his on-base percentage is off the charts. He's having an unbelievable start. Maybe they think it's time, as you said, Don, but I see both sides of the argument. Yeah. Well, I told you that my home needed a refresh, so I chose the painting professionals at Serta Pro Painters. They're working now. When I was really little, I don't know why, but I wanted to be a pastor. When I was like a small child. I wanted to be a celebrity by any means necessary. This is Spike Drop Vegas Heist. These players are playing for a lot of money today. I'm only here for a two feet. I don't really care about any other place. Can't even comprehend what is going on. But I like it. Listen up, Nets World. Get into the action and lock in a 2024-25 Nets level membership. Yeah! Members have it all. From exclusive events and behind the scenes access, 
the discounts across merch and tickets. Not to mention the ticket flexibility in the first place with round the block management and seamless transfer to your squad. This is Brooklyn and it's yours. Become a member today. Nature too. Biodiversity. It connects us and sustains us. But nature's biodiversity is at risk more than ever before. And the future of all life is in our hands. So what will you do? Love it or lose it? Sorry, guys, that took me for... What is this? Well, you know how our T-Mobile home internet can slow down? Uh-huh. Turns out, walls can get in the way. So, I fixed it. So instead of getting a Spectrum internet, which is fast and reliable 24-7, you got us internet that can be blocked by walls. Yes, but I think I fixed it. By smashing a hole through our wall. Well, technically, we walls. Yeah, I might not want to go in the dining room. Don't settle for T-Mobile cell phone internet. Give the natural. This is why I don't leave the house. Get faster, more reliable internet speeds with Spectrum. Is it possible to be more capable and more practical? Be able to perform here and here. Make a statement while barely making a sound. And command the road as well as what lies ahead. How we get there matters. Get exceptional offers at your local Audi dealer. Dupixent helps you do more with less asthma and can help you breathe better in as little as two weeks. Dupixent is an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that's not for sudden breathing problems. Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Ask your specialist about Dupixent. With Fidelity Income Planning, a dedicated advisor can help you grow and protect your wealth. They'll help you create a flexible strategy designed to balance growth and guaranteed income so you can enjoy the life you've created. That's the planning effect from Fidelity. Pan Pizza is Domino's best kept secret. It's handmade with fresh, never frozen dough, has two layers of cheese, toppings to the edge, and a crust that's golden and crispy. Well, consider the secret out. Order your favorite pan pizza or try it today for the first time at Domino's. <laughs> Eyes forward, don't drive distracted. Visit linkedbylovetv.org to learn more about kidney disease, transplantation, and prevention. Get the facts, get checked, and get healthy. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Michael and Don with you until 630-1-800-919-3776. A lot of stuff on the buffet that we could dine on. Let's go to Jeremy in Brooklyn. Jeremy. Hey guys, huge fan. Uh, just one quick point about the NHL and the penalty problem at the end of the games. Wouldn't it be just a quick solution to just make a certain time remaining, just make that a penalty shot? Well, that seems excessive too, right? Like, all right, I happened to trip a guy in the neutral zone and now he gets a penalty shot. And then if you're going to say, well, really, if there's only if it's in the offensive zone, if it's a scoring opportunity, but then it's in the eye of the beholder. I really would not want a game to be determined on a penalty shot for any penalty. And if there's one that's clear that takes away a scoring opportunity, Michael, by all means, do it. But can you imagine 35 seconds to go in the game? Rangers are up two to one and somebody gets tripped in the neutral zone. Well, it's a penalty, but you give them a penalty shot. Yeah, that but I mean, if you want to, if you want to stop the egregious penalties, then maybe this would clean up the game in the last minute, and there wouldn't be any penalties. True, but at the same time, it's now, tough we're gonna, though. But if we're going to start to judge, I think that one's a penalty shot. I don't think this one is a penalty shot. Then we're going to have the whole: is it pass interference? Is it not pass interference? Let's take it to replay. Right. Uh, I, I I really do think it's much easier, even though it kind of could technically in affects the integrity of the game by making it go longer. If you commit a penalty, say with under 30 seconds to play, the full two minutes. But has Don, to be here, here well, so I'm thinking as you're as you're talking. Uh, the game could go on for infinity. 
So the extra two minutes, it happens again with 30 seconds left. Well, let's put another two minutes. You can play playing forever. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good argument, too. I don't think that would happen, but I guess there is an avenue. Hey, let's, let's try to keep the game going. Yeah, uh, I... Because if you... if. If a guy's going in and, uh, you know, five seconds left in the extra two minutes, right? Yeah. And you tackle him, you got to add another two minutes. But there's got to be something that you could... Like, I would say this is this has always been a problem, right, Don? It, well, it's especially in big games, right? Now, what, now, the way I've... This is what I had suggested in the playoffs. Now, obviously, it wouldn't work in game seven. But let's say... In the first six possible games of a series, somebody drags you down. Right. All right, we don't extend the game, but the first two minutes of uh, the, the, the next game, the team starts with a power play. Yeah, but again, if it happens at the most inopportune time in Game yeah, Seven of the Stanley Cup, yeah, it's it's um, th there's listen, not nothing's perfect, Michael, but I, I do think extending the game is 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 an option. It doesn't happen that often, but. And when it does happen, you feel like, boy, it, it ended up being worth it because it, it, there wasn't really much of a punishment for it because they got away with it. Let's go to Mel in New Jersey. Mel? Good afternoon, fellas. Hey, Mel. What's up? Hey, so, Mike, I think that was a great, would you rather, uh, question. A little hot, but, you know, I think it was a great question because I think a lot of men wouldn't do it, you know, because, you know, you think about you wouldn't want it to happen to you. But I think a lot of men would also do it. But then again, if you think about women, you know, I think some women would do it. I think some women wouldn't do it. But I can see a woman being mad either way. You know, I can see her being mad that you didn't do it and get the $250 million. But I can also see her being mad if you did Well, do it. see, to me, that's why the question was good, Mel, exactly for why you said. Because if I'm looking at my timeline now on, on X... So many people agree. I mean, my wife would be mad if I didn't do it. She would drive me to the house, stuff like that. Uh, and they think that Don and Peter are being disingenuous, which isn't fair either. Maybe that's exactly well, how they feel. Well, but, you know, uh, some people say, well, we just don't have significant others. And would you? Well, you the, the, the game emanated from when we used to sit in the office and the stuff right. that we played, would you? So it, we couldn't even get it on the air. Listen, I can't speak for Peter. I'm telling you, I'm not. I, I know Nancy's not listening right now. That has nothing to do with that. It just, I, I'm just being honest. And if it's a legitimately good question, uh, the best questions, Michael, are ones that go 50 50. If it's 100%, yeah, you do it, then it's not a good question. That's why I'm surprised you're jumping us because if we're just automatically going to agree with you and it's easy, then it wouldn't be considered that great of a question. The fact that we thought about it and we disagreed makes it a fabulous question. Now, if you think that we were being motivated by our wives hearing it and we'd get in well, trouble. Well, I, I just, not, not specifically in that question, but in, in, in past questions also, I mean, to be totally honest, I don't like every question being graded as, I, oh, there's a terrible question. Oh, you asked this before. Uh, I, blah, 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 blah. Well, right, then it stopped. It, it died minute. today. Wait a minute. This is what the show is. I, I get we're it. We're very critical of each other. But, 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 I mean, the would you stuff, it, it, it's not that easy to come up with this without, and keeping it somewhat clean. All right, Michael. I, I'm not usually the one that jumps you at being bad. All right? That's usually Peter. But if we've heard it before, I think it's our obligation to call you on it. You Fine. do a wonderful job, Michael. But the fact that we're pushing back a little bit, that's the show. Well, I get it. Well, there's no more would you. No, there's no more well, pushing then, back. Anthony, you may not remember because you weren't the producer for all of these. But I would have a top five. And then Michael routinely would rip the quality of the top five, the subject of the top five, the actual order of the top five. And then I would throw a tantrum and say I'd never do it again. You guys would rip me for being a baby, and then I would cave and do it again. What, what, what's the difference, Michael? What's the difference? Well, we can't be, we, we can't get on you? No, no, I don't care about the you ripping part. You used to part. kill me with the top no, five. That, 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 that was the probably show. the tipping point. The part in, I just don't think that every single Wednesday that you guys are really legitimate with some of your answers. Because I know you off the air, I know you on the air, and I don't think you're being totally honest. I think you're being politically correct. It takes the starch out of the game. Come on, you know me, Michael. You've heard the things that I've said on the air. You know what I represent as a human being. You know that I'm, gen if any, if anything, I'm, I'm honest. I just think it's best that it goes to bed. I don't think people like it anymore. No, I got ripped by Mushnick once about it. I'm oh. done. That's almost a reason to now do it twice a week. 
I don't think there'll be a big uh, outcry if I don't do it, Phil. Oh, that's already started. Oh, please. Nobody cares. Nobody cares if I die tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, this is... So really? So if Would You Wednesday goes away, I don't think there's going to be a, a tear shed, considering there wouldn't be a tear shed if I passed away today. <laughs> be honest with each other. What do we do with that, Don? That, but this is what he does. This is who he is. What do you... What, what, well, this is what I do. I'm being honest. <laughs> it went from... Having a conversation about whether we're going to do Would You Wednesday again to now whether people would care if you died. That's quite the leap, don't you think? These are the things I do. I, I don't <laughs> think that people would care that much. I think there'd be a lot of people that would celebrate. It's a complete crap. <laughs> All right, we got to review the big stories coming up at sure. 5 o'clock. It's Kayla Greca and you right here on Yes and 98.7 ESPN. We just shipped our millionth monthly coffee subscription box. We're sending custom thank you gifts to everyone on our team who helped us get there. I had to call Eric at Custom Inc. Custom Inc. has been with us from the beginning, and he makes sure that we get everything we need and even reminds us of our own company milestones. This milestone, though, I get to tell him about. He is every bit as excited as we are and knows great quality products we can customize and send for the gifts. Celebrate all your milestones with custom gear. Get started today at customink.com. Do you want to know what I've been binge watching? Udemy courses. They have thousands of courses that help me advance my career from anywhere, especially with this little one. I need to get in as much learning as I can for both of us. With ButcherBox, you never have to worry about what's for dinner. We deliver grass-fed beef, organic, free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Get high-quality meat sourced from trusted partners with free shipping always. So you can always be prepared and enjoy the important things. Sign up for ButcherBox today. Before ClickUp, we were kind of a mess. We had so many different systems that we were using to communicate and share knowledge that you kind of had to code switch every time you were talking to somebody different. We have distributed teams uh, all across the world. There's a clear time difference there, and I think ClickUp really helps manage all that information information regardless of time. We can communicate asynchronously and so we are able to be very productive using Cluedo. That's from home, any season, any time. See game speed pitches from more than 600 pitchers. Get ready for game time with game simulations. Face your friends in live competitions. And train like the pros with expert drills and metrics to track your progress. So when your moment comes, you'll be ready. Win reality. Baseball uncaged. FanDuel Casino has your chance at the number one feeling. Winning. Winning ranks higher than any other feeling. Higher than number 30. Saying, I told you so. Told you so. Higher than number 89. The feeling of catching your car keys with one hand. And number 78, thinking it's Friday when it's really Saturday. New players get 200 chances at winning with their first deposit on FanDuel Casino.
season. New reasons to say yes. Wow! Aaron Judge crushes one. Get all the Yankees action on the Yes app. Download them. The Yankees uh, and uh, Anthony Volpe is going to be leading off. Uh, so that's a little bit of a change. He's hitting 375, doing everything right, also runs the base as well. So he's a prototypical leadoff man when he's getting on base, which he didn't do last year. This year he is. Gleyber Torres has been slumping, so that's the move. I understand it. Marcus Stroman is third start of the year. He's yet to give up an earned run. He's 1-0, uh, and oh, pitched very, very well, and this Marlins team is not very good. Knicks with a big win yesterday against the Bulls. Uh, the Milwaukee Milwaukee Bucks might have lost Antetokounmpo for a bit. Uh, calf injury, they've ruled out an Achilles. That's intact. But remember one thing. Somebody brought this up to me earlier, Don. Hmm. Remember with Durant, they said it was just a calf. Yeah. And then he rested, and then he played in the championship, and it ripped. I mean, it's all connected, and you hope that that's not the case. So I would think that Milwaukee, which hasn't been playing well anyway, they're going to fall out of the two spot. The Knicks are probably, if they continue, I mean, if, if they beat the Celtics, and uh, and and they beat the uh, the Bulls again. They're probably going to finish in the second spot. And we said this earlier. I don't know if that's the best thing in the world because that means that they're going to face Philly or the Heat. Right. Philly with Embiid, the Heat being the Heat. Is that the best place to finish, or is it best for them to finish third and and play? Who would they play if they finish third? Um, if they finish third, it would be Indiana. the Pacers. Yeah, and now you know Halliburton's. You know he's a handful, but I'll take my chance well, playing the Pacers rather than the the, uh, the the Sixers with Embiid or the Heat being the Heat. It's so odd because as you go up the standings, I think the matchups become easier. So right now the eight seed is Miami, right. and if they finish as the two seed, that's that that's the uh, potential matchup if the Heat end up beating Philadelphia to get in. Right, because then they would be the seventh. See? Right, exactly. So that would be the worst matchup to me. Second worst would be Philly. Third worst would be Indiana. Fourth would be Cleveland. And fifth would be the, the Magic. That climbs right up. Yeah. <laughs> the standings, like, the better the team in the conference is, I think, the better matchup. It's, I, I brought this up um, before the meeting. I came in early to have lunch. I think it's an easy answer. Um for the East, but not necessarily for the NBA. In the East, it's it, would you, do you take the Celtics or the field? I to take come out of the, the Celtics. East? Right. Would you take them for the NBA? No. There's too many good teams in the West. But it's but really, it's only Denver. No, 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 no. Minnesota's a beast. They're real, Oklahoma know. City is good. I know, but they don't have any pedigree either, Michael. Uh, but you know what? You're asking me. I think that okay. West teams could knock off the Celtics. I don't think any team in the East could. If any team in the East beats the Celtics, I'd be shocked. If, yes. if Denver beats the Celtics, I'm not yes. surprised at all. Because this is not to disrespect the Knicks if they finish second. But they finish second only because of Giannis would, would be hurt. And, and, and let's, let's be honest, Michael. Doc Rivers has not worked. They're, they're, they're worse off. They're much worse than they were with Griffin. They should have just left everything alone, and then I think they would be fine. Maybe not enough to win a championship, but obviously bringing Doc Rivers has not worked. So that opens it up, and then you've got a bunch of teams that probably feel as good about their chances as the Knicks should. Now, the difference is if the Knicks were healthy, Michael, I think they'd clearly be the second-best team in the conference behind Boston. But they aren't hurt. They are compromised without Randall because... At the end of the day, when this team gets in the playoffs, and this is what scares me, Michael, as much as I believe in this Nick team, are they going to be able to find secondary scoring if you get a good defensive team with a good coach that will commit themselves to shut down Brunson? Where are you getting well, then, those uh, other extra there's points? There's so much pressure then on DiVincenzo to mm -hmm. shoot 40% from three, and let's see if he could do that. Uh, Ananobi is going to have to do some scoring. Hart's going to have to do some scoring. They're going to have to really... Uh, share the wealth, so to speak, because as great as I think Brunson is, and we said this earlier, I, I think he's in the top five in the NBA in MVP voting. I don't think he's scoring 45 points a game in the playoffs. No. And when you're in a seven-game set and they can make adjustments and their whole thought process is on stopping you, it's not like, okay, you're playing this team and they're playing somebody in two days. They will no. spend a week and a half trying to stop Brunson. Mm -hmm. I, I think other people have to step up, and that's where you're going to feel the loss of Julius Randle. And, and it's scary, Michael, because you're talking about averaging 40 points a game. That's close to it. 
So if he gives you, say, 25, you're going to have that's 15 that you're going to have to pick up. Now, I think on any given night, someone can do that. Although I think OG's more a, a better defender. He can shoot, but I don't know if he can g compensate for that kind of loss in points. Same thing with DiVincenzo. If he's hot from three, yes. If he's cold from three, then absolutely not. So that's going to be the conundrum for this Knicks team. And the other thing I wanted to bring up to you, and this is completely unfair, but I think it's worth bringing up because the expectations are so high. When was the last time you've been really honestly and truly impressed with the Knicks win? Um, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. Well, when they, when they blew out Denver at home, that was a while ago. That was a while ago, but that was that was impressive. That and was Denver impressive. was at the end of a long trip, but you know you got to give you got to give you flowers yeah. when when they have to be given Absolutely. out. Absolutely, they yeah, destroyed I, the defending champs. And I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying that we're holding them to a different standard because once you get to the playoffs, Michael, it's every night. It's a quality opponent. Even if it ends up being a team that you want to face, like the Magic of the Cavaliers, it's quality. I mean, good good on them beating the Bulls. The Bulls are not good. Uh, Donovan's done a good job with them, but they're not a great team. They obviously beat a compromised Milwaukee team that's under 500 since Doc Rivers got there, and then clearly Giannis wasn't 100%. And, and all right, the, were you impressed with the win over the Kings? And the Kings have the same record as them. That You, the, you could be impressed by the, the way they came back in the game, but is that an overly impressive win at home against the Kings? Yeah, but they won. I mean, yeah, we, no. we shouldn't worry about style points. Absolutely. But once we get to the playoffs, Michael, every night, Every other night, it's a quality opponent. And obviously, in the in a series, it's the same opponent. So it'll be interesting. I think what they're doing is terrific, but it's going to be a different. It's going to be a different level once they get to the playoffs. I think they're. I think they're made to have a run here. I, I think what's happening at MSG, it could be pretty special. I don't know if it's going to be 94 level, but I think it's going to be pretty special. But here's my biggest concern, do. though, Don. If they finish second, they could get knocked on the first round. I, I, but the Knicks are the one thing that you worry about because you got a series against Miami. You got a series against Philadelphia. Can they win? Yes. But how much is it going to take out of them to win, to get out of that first round? Like the like you said, the Magic. I think they can take care of the Magic, and I think they can take the, care of the Magic in short order. They seem to have the Cavaliers' number in a big spot. I think the Pacers, are they good enough defensively to shut down Brunson? They can score, but can they shut him down? But you get Miami, you get Philadelphia with a healthy Embiid. And I know Nick fans will say, well, Don, look what they've done against Philadelphia. And they did beat, they did beat the Sixers with Embiid in Philadelphia before he got hurt. But with all the work this team has done, God, what an unfair first-round matchup, right? Miami or Philadelphia? And it's unfair because let, let's say you do the, you know, the unthinkable and you finish second, you're going to get penalized for finishing second yeah. rather than and, get an advantage. And the thing is, Michael, the way Thibodeau is, they're going to play for second. Of course, and I they should. I don't think he knows how to dial it down. I, and I don't know if you know if you want them to, because that's that. That's but here's the problem, Don. You can't you can't take your foot off the pedal because you don't want to finish in the in the that's play true. either. That's still a possibility. Yeah, and and you know what? I think they could, they can win tomorrow because the Celtics have nothing to play for. Yep. And then you got the Nets. No offense to the Nets, but they're not very good no, right that's now. Offense. You should be able to win you that game. You mean offense? Well, I'm just saying it, it. It is what it is. You know, so they should be. They they very easily can win the next two. And then you put yourself in a situation where now are you going to tank a game to avoid the two? And Thibodeau's not going to let that happen. Now, the other team, Madison Square Garden, they lose yesterday. And uh, the Islanders win. So it's good for the Islanders who are trying to nail down a playoff spot. The, the Rangers are still trying to, uh, you know, get the number one seed in the, in the Eastern Conference and the President's Trophy in the entire NHL. Uh, and it was 3-2 and empty netter made it 4-2. Yeah. But that's a big, big win for the Islanders. And a little controversy as well with a hit um, that you know, Peter Laviolette thought was dirty on the Islanders' side. And nobody else agrees with him. And I wonder <laughs> if he's going to back back off at all because nobody in the world agrees with him. Yeah, it's, wait, None of the players did either. Everybody kind of just treated it as just an accident, which it looked like. The thing that he really should be upset about is the non-call on Dobson. At the end of the game, when the Rangers had the uh, the goalie pulled, the cross check that wasn't called. But if it had been called, it was like 30 seconds left. But still, it should have been called. And Dave went apoplectic after the game, which was terrific to hear. Uh, but even Dave thought it was just an accidental collision, Mika and Pellick. So I'm not really sure what the ulterior motive was for for Laviolette. I mean, he's a great coach, Michael. So he doesn't do anything on a whim. I'm just going to go under the assumption that he will see it again. 
and maybe back down. They were off today, so he didn't speak to the media. He'll speak before before the game tomorrow against Philadelphia, but maybe by then it'll be a non-story. But Rangers are good, man. They're, but there's still some things to clean up. Bad starts have been a bit of a problem Isn't over the last weird, few though? weeks. Isn't that weird, though? I mean, we're so close to the end of the season and we're still looking to clean stuff up. Well, but, but this is what happens when you're held to a standard of winning a championship. Right. You know, if you're just, hey, happy to be in, then there isn't anything really to clean up. But you're held to a standard of trying to win a championship. You're first in 30 years. You want to do that? you got to play better in the first period. You want to do that? you got to play better five on five. Uh, there's things that need to be cleaned up. They've got three games in which to do it. But you saw last night when they're on the power play, how good it is. Kreider scores a goal. Fox scores a goal. 3 nothing becomes 3-2. They owned the Islanders in the third period. They just could not crack the code on Varlamov. Good on the Islanders to get the win. I want to see them make the playoffs. I want both these teams to be able to make the playoffs and possibly meet each other uh, in the second round. That would be awesome. Uh, Panarin had another point. That's a point in 10 straight games. I thought Shesterkin played well despite giving up the three goals in the first period. Rangers are right there to win the President's Trophy and getting uh, a, a little, a better match. I don't want to say easy because that's insulting. A better matchup in the first round. Because as much as the Knicks want to avoid the Heat or the Sixers in the first round, Rangers want to avoid the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. So get a Washington team. Get a Detroit team. Have the Islanders finish in third. Get the Penguins. Get the Red Wings. Get the Flyers. Get the Capitals in the first round. And finally, maybe get a situation where you can actually get to that second round matchup, likely against the Hurricanes or maybe the Islanders, and be a rested team so you can make a run. Because this team is poised to win a cup, Michael. Unlike the Knicks where we can say style points for getting out of the second round or, or whatever, this Knicks team, uh, this Ranger team, I think I think you'd be disappointed if they don't win the cup. Honestly, I, I, they if they win this, if they win the President's Trophy, Michael, why wouldn't you? Why shouldn't you have those aspirations? Absolutely, you should. They didn't change coaches because they just wanted to, you know, yeah. make the playoffs. Yeah. So when you're the best team in the regular season and you look at how things may lay out and how this team has played and how this goaltender has played recently, and you look at the West, um, listen, that's all, that's four rounds from now. But you know, Dallas, they beat won both games against Colorado. They've beaten Dallas this year. They have beaten Edmonton this year. Um, uh, that you got to feel real good about making a run. But you know how hockey is. Uh, you can win a Stanley Cup, and you can get beat in the first round. Just ask the Boston Bruins. So that's why I say about cleaning things up, Michael, because you can always be better. Let's go to Mike in New Jersey. Mike, what do you got? Michael, Don, how you guys doing? Good. How are Sorry. you? Good, yeah. I want to talk about the Knicks. I, I know what you guys are saying, that you want to maybe they want to avoid the Heat, maybe avoid the Sixers. But you know what? At the end of the day, their job is to win their last three games of the season. And wherever they finish, they finish. Oh, yeah. right the second or third seed. Couldn't and agree with you more. I hate, and you know what? That's why even at any sport, I hate saying, oh, I'd rather play this team, that team. Because you know what? Be careful what you wish for. The Pacers, hey, they gave some Knicks some problems, some problems this year, too. Yep. Now, I'm not saying they're the Heat or the Sixers, but any team you play in the playoff is going to be good. And with how, with how tight it is, what, you want them to lose the last game to try to get the third? No, they might no, 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 no. we're not saying that. We're, it, it, we're but, just playing the what-if game. Right. If they finish second, it might be. But you're, you're absolutely right, Mike. you you got to win. And, and Don said it best. Thibodeau doesn't play that game. No. He, he, he doesn't know how to keep his foot off the pedal. No, and that, that's that's what is so unique about this Nick team. It's it's that's their style. But I'm sorry, it, it, it's a reality. Uh, yeah, you want to finish as high as you can, and I think that's the way they're going to play it. But yeah, you know, do you really on it in all your heart? Do you really want to play Philadelphia or Miami in the first round? Even if you think you can beat them, do you really want that kind of a test in the first round for a team that you want to try to get rested and and try to make a run? That's a tough. That's a that's a real tough draw, man. Let's go to John and Mawa. John. John. Hey guys, how are you? Good. How are you? Love. Uh, I, 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 I love the uh, Would You Wednesday, and I'm kind of feeling for, for Michael, and I think I distilled Michael's angst down for Don, cause, and Don, due respect to you, but I think you've done this a couple of times in the past. So when Michael asks those questions, first of all, you do very well. You're not destitute, and oftentimes you'll say, well, look, if I was destitute, he's not asking you, would you cheat on your wife or whatever? And I, by the way, I think the whole cheating on the wife thing needs to go. But he's not saying, would you do it for $50,000? He's saying, would you do it for $250 million or $500 million or a billion? Because I 
think you've done it in the past where you said, nah, nah, I'm, I'm good. And I, it just, and I also have a would be if you want to wait for it. But I, I think, Don, I think you take it to a hyperbole to say, look, I'm, uh, you know, I do okay with myself. I'm not going to cheat on my wife. It's not 50000 or 100000 It's life-changing money but, for you, your children, uh, no, your grandchildren. But, but you're missing the point. And we if, get the guilt point. I but, get the but, guilt but, point. But, 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 you, but you just can't ignore that. Because this is somebody that's in my life. And so you don't understand, like, how awkward it would be to know that that's a secret I'm keeping from her. Now, if now if, you're, if Michael asked the question that I can go to Nancy and say, Nancy, listen, here's the offer, and she says, by, by all means, do it, then there is no guilt. The guilt lies not so much, Michael, in sleeping with uh, Nancy's best friend. It's the secret. It's having to keep it to myself, knowing that, that that lie is out there. Where did you get this money? Well, I got the, I won the lottery, or I got a bonus at ESPN. I, I don't want to have to live that lie. It would eat at me, honestly. Now, if I, had, if I was destitute, then I'd have to live with that guilt to save my family. But not being in a position to have to save my family, you can't understand that that lie that I'd have to live with would eat at me? I, I mean... If you're saying that it would eat at you, I've got to I've got to agree with you. But it's something that your wife will never know. You're telling me for two hundred and fifty million dollars, but you could not live with guilt. But the money is but the money's kind of irrelevant. Why? It's just because I now have to live a lie. But you're not living a lie. She's never going to know. There's no way she'll ever know. But how am I going to even if tell you her? make up a facata excuse about the two fifty? She will never know. That's but, part of the game. But 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 part of the guilt is. Now I got to come up with a cock to lie, as you put it, and I got to live with that lie and continue to tell that lie for the rest of my life. But you, you don't have to do anything. You just say I got it from work. Boom, and she she's going to accept it because that's part of the deal. Oh, the Michael, only thing you have dumb. to live with is that you know you slept with your wife's best friend, and she but you, knows. But you, your wife will never know. But you make it seem like I can easily explain away two hundred and fifty million dollars, Michael. She's been she's been with me every second of the time I've been at ESPN. It's not conceivable that I got a $250 million bonus from ESPN. But you're not playing the game the right way. It is conceivable in the game. <laughs> Let's go to D in Albany. D. D. Who, what's, what's your up? name? Hello? D. Whatever what your name mean? is, you, you're on. Go. I don't know what he was saying. And you wouldn't have liked what he had to say anyway. He said that he, well, I'll, I'll tell you what it said on the computer so everybody knows. Michael's lying about the answer. No, I'm not. I'm actually being no, honest. I, I got to tell you, my, the one thing Michael does not do is lie. He's a, he will do a lot of things. And I don't do stuff uh, for radio. I, that, uh, Jody would laugh at me if I turned down $250 million. Laugh. But she'd be red hot if you kept it from her. But if she I, ever I did wouldn't find keep out. it from her. The, the way the rule of the game is, she'd never know. I know. I know. I know. I know the rules, Michael. Yeah, but you know what? You're not playing. That's why the game is ended no, but, today. It's died but, on the but vine. But this is what makes. But you know what's so funny, Anthony? Is that everything that bothers him right now about the game is why the game works. If I go, oh, Michael, that's that's great. I agree with you. We would have moved on, and and it would it would have been kind of a dud day. It's lived for like the Latin. The next, it was 3:45. We did this. Well, let's put it this way, Don. We're all we're all adults here. I guess it didn't work very well. One of the guys on the show, I'm disengaged. He wasn't even listening. So it's run its course. <laughs> if if you know what, you're a really bad person. Why is that? What he said? <laughs> no, I, I, I checked I'm out. Saying. That was the quote. I just checked I, out. I get it, but it's so wrong of you to. To, to use that as an example on why would you didn't work it's it's you know what I gotta th I'm gonna this, Michael's not gonna take this as a compliment but it's a compliment he's he's like he's like the Al Davis Oakland Raiders just win baby you're the one who told me and you've drilled it into my head <laughs> over 22 years I just want to make good radio I don't <laughs> yeah, care I, who I, I heard those are your words that's why that's why I said it's a compliment your quarterback must go down, and he must go down hard. Let's go to Jerry, I guess it's Cedar Grove. What's up, Jerry? Yes. Hey, Don, you're going to like this one. Okay, let's turn it back on Michael. What would you do? But your wife's best friend is a man. Oh, wow. If she did it? 
No, you. No, you. No, I am, I, I, I'm heterosexual. Why would I do that? Because it's $250 million. Yeah, but I'm not crossing that line. If, if wow. I'm just not doing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to cross the guilt line. Well, you know, my there line's a lot thicker than your line. I, well, it, only because you make it thicker. <laughs> All right, so let me ask you, what if Nancy's best friend was a guy? There'd be no guilt. She wouldn't well, care. It'd still be guilt. What's the guilt? Well, yeah, it's still, because again, you don't listen. It's keeping the truth from her. You like starting this, don't you, Jerry? Uh, Jerry, I got to tell you. Yeah. Wow. You're like, this was gasoline. You just walked by with a cigarette. I love what you did there. Well, good job, Jerry. Let's go to, um, let's go to Mike in New City. What's up, Mikey? I think the uh, the whole debate on the the hockey, you know, extra time with the penalties, Don, you know it better than anyone else. So basically, hockey has every score sheet incorrect then with every penalty that occurs under two minutes because they'll list it as a two minute penalty, whether it's nineteen ten into the game, it doesn't matter. Right. But what if you just did it like soccer? Soccer say they play ninety minutes, but everyone knows if you watch the soccer game. There's extra time all the time added on. Right. But I'm with you. I'm with you. But 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 when they put two minutes down, it's not that two minutes was served. It's that that's how much that penalty was worth because each pe the different penalties. But well, Mike have is saying words. like if there's a hundred a minute fifty left, right. to play a minute fifty. But Mike, what I said earlier, I don't know if you heard. Well, what happens? If in that extra minute 50, the last 10 seconds of that, somebody tackles somebody. And then, I mean, we could go on ad infinitum. Yeah, you know what? And that's the penalty time that you took. Unfortunately, just yeah, like with I, soccer, there could be 20 penalties in that 45 minutes, whatever it is. And but they're going to add that on to the end. But what, what I like about your idea, and, and, and soccer is a bad comparison because we don't know. It's hypothetical when it's going to end because we don't see the clock. They, they keep it still. The clock would still be up there. The length of the penalty would then become the clock. So at least you know when exactly. the game is going to end. problem I have with soccer is we don't know. It, it feels arbitrary because they don't show the clock. At least, at least under your idea, the penalty would represent how much time was left in the game. And I, I don't want to kill the most popular sport in the world. And people think uh, Andrew Gunling used to laugh at me. The fact that you don't know how much time is left, it's just a mystery. In soccer, it, to me, it ruins the game for me. I, I, it I don't... ruins the game. Oh, we don't know how much time. Let's guess. I don't like it. And you know what? It leaves room for impropriety. I'm yes, sorry. it does. It just does. Well, what you're saying and what Mike said makes sense. Okay, it's a minute 50 more. Right. So you put that on the clock. It's a minute 50. Not, all right, we're going to play until the official feels like we've exhausted every scoring opportunity and we can now blow the whistle. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not knocking soccer, and it's been explained to me like I'm a five-year-old that it's always been the way it, it doesn't have to be. We have the technology to know exactly how much time is left. I do not understand the the service you do to the fans of not knowing whether the game is going to end or not. And then, oh, well, they've even admitted, Andrew used to admit to me, if they see a, a play is developing, they'll let it play out. Can and you imagine it happening in Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final? Well, you know, Panarin's on a breakaway. The clock expired, but eh, let him take the shot anyway. See what happens. And then here's the best part. The fans accept it like sheep. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how much time, but I'll play along. <laughs> and then when you don't like it, the soccer aficionados think you're adult. Right, yeah, they think you're a complete cretin. <laughs> just, oh, you just don't understand. It's the beautiful game. It stinks. No, and you don't know when the game ends, it stinks. Because you know what? You are in a you're in an abusive relationship. You don't like it, but you love the sport so much you're afraid to criticize right. it. I'll accept it because boy, you might take it away from me. Take it away. If you're not going to tell me when a sport ends, imagine you didn't know how many innings a game was. Then that the Angel Hernandez in inning seven. Oh, by the way, it's over. Or, or inning 11, it's over. And there was no warning. And the players had no warning. And they didn't know, should we have urgency? And in soccer, oh, please, give us more. Treat us as poorly as you want. Even Ted Lasso can't figure it out. Please, <laughs> please hurt me. We'll be back. Hey, so I found a betting system that's really working great for me. So did I. What's yours? I set up an hour a week time limit on FanDuel. I can also set up wager limits. So I only bet what I can afford, and betting saves fun. Right. So what's your system? What's that? Your system. What's your system? Mom. 
What is that? Every better has a system. Make FanDuel's responsible gaming tools a key part of yours. If you've been diagnosed with mesothelioma or asbestos lung cancer, choose the right law firm by asking, what are your highest verdicts? What experience do you have? How many lawyers are on staff? How many clients have you represented? Speak to Weitz and Luxembourg at 800-LAW-6789 to get unmatched answers. It's the biggest financial decision of your life. Call 800-LAW-6789 or visit misowin.com. The fact that this Reese's ad showed up at this exact moment proves that your devices are listening to your stomach. Taste is not an option. Taste is everything. 1800, the world's most awarded tequila. My dad, he's a double amputee, and uh, he's one of my favorite people in the world. To me, a hero is someone who fights for our country and freedom. My dad is a hero. Most of our troops built this house, and it's basically made for him. My dad can get through the wide doorways. When he is making our lunch, he can reach anything we need. He'll help me build tiny projects. Life is good here. Without homes for our troops, we'd be living in a home that didn't have all these features that helped him. Homes for Our Troops builds and donates specially adapted custom homes nationwide for severely injured post-9-11 veterans and enables them to rebuild their lives. If they get a new house like this one, it'll help them, like, do normal life. My dad's not just a hero. He's my hero. Join our mission at hfotusa.org. Is it possible to be more capable and more practical? Be able to perform here and here. Make a statement while barely making a sound. And command the load as well as what lies ahead. How we get there matters. Get exceptional offers at your local Audi dealer. My name is Sarah Tierney and Tunnel to Towers Foundation purchased my daughter and I a mortgage-free home in honor of my fallen husband. I'm asking you to donate $11 a month so Tunnel to Towers can help other fallen first responder families like mine. Visit T2T.org or call 1-844-BRAVEST. The Michael K. Show on Yes is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Your attention, please. You're watching Yes. Chris here, back here for the Michael K. Show. Alex Verdugo broke the goose egg for the Yankees in the second inning with his second homer of the season last night. A solo shot puts the Yankees up 1-0 on the Marlins. In the fifth, Giancarlo Stanton stay hot. He's got seven hits over his last four games, including four for extra bases, including that ribby double right there to give the Yankees a 2-0 lead. Carlos Rodon pitched into the seventh and allowed two unearned runs to pick up his first win of the season. His ERA, by the way, is down to 1.72. Now, Stanton is hitting 438 over his last four. Juan Soto at 462. He's driven in seven over that stretch and he has 11 ribbies on the season. That put the Yankees up 3 nothing there and they hold on to win it 3-2. to two. So the Bombers have a 10-2 start to the 2024 campaign. It's just the third time they started their first dozen games with that record and they made the World Series all three times, winning in 1949 in five games over the Dodgers, but losing in 1922 to the Giants and 2003 to the Marlins. Tonight's game against that same franchise will be on Prime Video with coverage beginning at 6.30. And first pitch is scheduled for a little after 7. Don't forget, after the game, you can catch a full post-game show back on Yes and streaming on the Yes app after our Nets coverage. I got a little pinch.
Strike Report here brought to you by Bet365. Did you know, Don, that on this date in 1913, something happened to the Yankee franchise? I would say on this date in 1913. So it's 10 when... years after it became an, fran a, an official franchise. Now, right. So they started out as the New York Hilltoppers. So I'm assuming in 2013 is when they became officially the New York Yankees. 1913. They, they officially took the name as the first game as, as the Yankees. They've been called the Americans, the Hilltoppers, or the Highlanders. They didn't really have an official name. But then, you know, they were called Yankees sometimes in the newspaper. Then it was officially adopted as the name of the team. So this is the first day, it's... 1913, that they were officially the Yankees. Um, Yankees are 10-2, and two, tied with three other teams in franchise history for the best 12-game start. Now, only one other Yankee team has ever been 11-2. and two. So if the Yankees win tonight, they get to that lofty mark. And that was in 2003, Don. Uh, they went on to start the season at 18 and three, and they finished with 101 wins. They went to the World Series, and then they ended up losing uh, to the um, the Marlins, ironically enough. So they could tie that start with a win tonight. So tonight they have Marcus Stroman going against the Marlins. That was a pinstripe report brought to you by Bet365. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. Let's go back to the phones. Let's go to. Uh, Drew and New Paltz. Drew. Hey, Michael, Don, Peter. How are you guys? Good. What's, What's up? up? Hey, so I got a Ranger point. Uh, I'm a big Rempy fan. I mean, who isn't? Um, I think they look softer when Rempy's healthy scratched. I think that what happened last night to Trocek, maybe not Savannah Jet, because I don't think that was dirty. But what happens if Trocek doesn't happen if Rempe's on the ice? Well, well but it's, it, first of all, Rempe wouldn't be on the ice with 30 seconds to go down a goal. It was at the end of the no, game. I, they were I desperate. Agree. I agree. Well, now, who are you taking out? Uh -huh. You're putting Rempe in. Who are you taking out? But like, so, what, Brzezinski's the fourth liner for him? Am Sometimes. I right or am I wrong? Well, like, but, but I, I think yeah, he adds speed. It really depends who you're playing, Drew. Because I agree with you. I think having Rempe there as a physical presence, say, against a Florida would probably be important, a big, thick team. But if you're playing a team that's playing a little bit more of a wide-open style, I might want Brodzinski in there because he's quicker. You know, so uh, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you, Drew. Last night's a bad example. That was a desperate train team trying to hold on to a point, uh, hold on to two points at the end of the game. But to say they're softer without <sighs> I, I, Michael, I love Rempe. I love what he brings to the table. But once you get to the playoffs, man, you got to be able to prove that you can play. And you got to bet the, put the best guys on the ice and matchups. And there's just certain teams that you're probably not going to have him out there in a big spot. Um, I think against a Florida team, you probably would want him out there. I, I, I don't know if you're going to want him out there against... Uh, against maybe Detroit. Maybe you'd want him out there against Washington because of Wilson, but... Don't use last night's. Michael, there was 30 seconds left. I mean, that was going to happen. You could you could have had uh, Bob Probert on the team. That that uh, that play was still going to happen. Let's go to Steve. Steve's in Rhode Island. Steve. Hey, Steve. Yes. Hi, guys. I've been a Ranger fan. Sorry about the sore throat. Well, I've been a Ranger fan better. since the 60s. Thank you. I've been a Ranger fan since the 60s. Mm -hmm. And when Jacob Trouba is out of the lineup, we are a better team. 11 and 2. Uh, exactly. Well, Anyways, Anders Lee skated right by him at the beginning of the game last night. And when he got suspended, all we did was win. When he, when he got hurt for three weeks, I told my son, all we're going to do is win now with him out of the lineup. You should put Zach Jones in there. And DeAndre Miller is a much better player, not playing with Truba, but playing with Schneider. They looked terrific when Truba was out of the lineup. With him in the lineup, all he does is wave his stick around. He doesn't play any defense, and we give up four or five goals a game with him in the lineup to Pittsburgh and whoever. We're a much better team with Truba out of the lineup. Well, we traded Callahan. We traded McDonough. We traded captains. I know we can't trade him, but you can bench him. Say he's got an injury. Put Zach Jones in there. They looked terrific when he was suspended. I get it, but Zach Jones has never played in the postseason before. I, the numbers don't lie, Michael. 
They're eleven and two with Truba out of the lineup. All right, it's, so it's the numbers incredible. are like, tell me why, why, why do you think I, I that just is? Think it's, listen, because I, I, I just think it's circumstances. He's all right. He's not the greatest defender, but he also hits. He's experienced. He gives you a little bit of an offensive flair. He's worked well with Miller. But you know what? Schneider's played very well with Miller as well. So late in games, maybe there's certain situations where you take a little bit of the minutes away from Truba. But he's also a captain. He hits like a Mack truck. He changed the series against Pittsburgh when he knocked Crosby out, Michael. I mean, uh, I think people look at that and say, oh, look, we're 11-2. and two. Zach Jones never played in the postseason before. And now I'm going to try to win a cup with him as my third pair. Uh, I get, listen, the numbers are there, so there's always going to be a lot of conversation about Truba being out because they were 11 and 2 without him. But Michael, it's a very, very good team with Truba in the lineup. They're on their way to winning the President's Trophy. Right. I mean, uh, listen, there are times he leaves a little bit to be desired defensively, and I'm sure Peter Laviolette will figure out late in games how to make that work. But let's not make it seem like he doesn't contribute anything. He was playing. He, he was playing on your second power play. He hits. He can change games that way. And he's also, by the way, the captain of your team. Yeah, that that throws a little wrinkle into it, Kevin in East Windsor. Kevin. Hey guys, good afternoon. Love the show. I hate to wreck all the hockey talk because I'm not a giant hockey game guy, but I wanted to. Set the record straight on the soccer extra time. Okay. It's not arbitrary. The fourth official is keeping track of the time. And in hockey, the whistle but, but wait, blows. Wait, Kevin, wait a minute. Clock. Wait a minute. So the fourth official is keeping track. The fans don't know. Yeah. Fans have no idea. We have the technology, Kevin. Um, Get with it. No, I'm being no, honest. No, I'm not being honest. So the fourth, the fourth guy have... has a clock that says how much time is left. Why can't that be superimposed on the scoreboard? Why yeah. are the fans in the dark? Good question. I don't have the answer. I do know this. I know this because I work as a television cameraman. TV knows a good three minutes before we get to 90 minutes how much time there's going to be. So it's not a complete secret. Well, but uh, but, but yeah, I don't know don't, why and, keeping and, it from everybody makes sense. And I always hate, no matter what the conversation is, well, that's always the way it's been. Well, you know, people evolve. Things change. I'm sure soccer had no choice before they had digital clocks and they were doing things by hand. But now we have the technology. In every other sport that's timed, a guy gets hurt, they stop the clock, the official signals, start the clock back up once he's dragged off the field. Let's play. I, I don't get how it benefits anybody, Michael. I don't understand. I we don't, have the I never technology understood. now. I never understood. And then when you say it, you look like the rube. Because, oh, you just don't get this great sport. No, I don't. No, and I, don't. Don't, I prefer not hey. to get it because I don't want to be kept in the dark about the ending of the game. No, listen, it's not my favorite sport, but but that's not my motivation behind it. I mean, there's a lot of things that bug me about other sports, too. This bugs me about soccer, and it just seems it's easily correctable. And the whole idea, well, that's always the way that it's been. Well, the, we look at Major League Baseball. They played without helmets. They played without African Americans. They played with, uh, with uh, the DH. Uh, the, things change. We evolve. They got a clock in baseball now, people. Wake up. Uh, Adam Schefter reporting that ESPN has reached a nine-year media rights extension with Peyton Manning's Omaha Productions, extending mm. the partnership into 2034. That's t 10 years. Yeah. Now, so did you, I, forgive me, Michael, you, you told a, a funny story about Eli on the air, right? Yeah. About the, 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 about the, the Manning the money. About so the Bruno he, Cuccinelli jacket. So his response, he knew that in the back of his head. Oh, yeah. But I wonder how much Eli gets, because this is Peyton's company, Omaha Productions. So it continues the Madden cast. It doesn't say it continues it for all nine years, uh, but it also continues Omaha content, such as Peyton's places and Eli's places. Listen, it works. Yeah, the K-Rod thing didn't get a nine-year extension. But that wasn't your fault. No, it was, it was Alex leaving for an exclusive deal with Fox. And I still think there's something that could work. You know, Alex is not the only person that can analyze baseball in real time. But K-Rod, it just rolled off the tongue. <laughs> so you do shows? You make shows based on how funny oh, the absolutely. name is? absolutely. I mean, K. Cohn, uh, th that doesn't sound funny. Where, does, where's the funny good. there? Like, ham is not funny. Ham sandwich is funny. <laughs> This guy, <laughs> but Cone is so good. He's great, but he's so on the main show. Here's what I think the thing is 
with the, with Peyton. See see if you agree with me. Mm -hmm. Now I, I could be ticking a lot of people off. You lock him up for nine more years after this. Maybe somewhere in those nine years, Troy Aikman says, I'm done. Peyton Manning would be the best color analyst in football. I don't know. You don't think so? I don't know. Oh, I think he'd be unbelievable. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm being honest. I really don't know. I mean, it, you, you have a strange way of trying to figure out why people would be good or not. I think there's a certain kind of chemistry that you have to have to be a good analyst. And it's not, it's not always about the knowledge or being a good speaker or being well-read. It's just that there's a, there's a dance to it. It's, almost, it's like play-by-play -play in a sense. There's some very good announcers, Michael, that just don't make great play-by-play -play guys because they just don't have the cadence down. Like, I don't, I don't know if as, as funny as he is, as engaging as he is, I don't know if that necessarily translates into being a really good analyst. I, I, I think it would. I really do, because he is funny. I think being an analyst, if you're just dry, it's not perfect. You have to have some kind of humor and levity, and I think he'd be, he'd be perfect at it. I mean, why is he? He's the, uh, the, the white whale that everybody chases. ESPN caught him, but he's the white yeah, whale. But, but, but they don't put any thought into it. They just look at the name. No, I'm not, I, think, I think Tom Brady's going to be terrific, but, but I'm not as sure as I would be about Peyton. But the thing is, Michael, if it, if it was about being good at it, then why wouldn't there be an audition? Why wouldn't you work your way up like everybody else did back in the day? They're just taking Different the flyers world. on guys. They are, they but, but they're, they're taking a chance on a name and a fame. But, I mean, there are certain things that point out that they'd be good. I mean, first of all, he's great on the Madden cast. I know you're good and you don't watch it that much. But he's good on it. And he breaks down plays and he, and he predicts plays. He, he is what everybody thought Tony Romo was becoming. I just think that there's a certain magic you have to have. And I don't know if he'll have it or not. I wasn't sure Aikman would have it. I think Aikman's the best. Aikman's terrific. But there was no indication by anything, by how he dealt with the media or any of the things he did off the field that gave you any indication that Troy would be this good. You know who's going to be the best baseball guy? Otani, because he's got a lot of words stored up. <laughs> he hasn't used those words. Nobody's asked him questions. Nobody's allowed to ask questions. So when he finally opens up, oh, is he going to be terrific? I love it. Terrific. We'll come back. More of your phone calls, Biggie, and then coming up as well on Yes and 98.7 ESPN. Growing up, I always wanted to do so many things. I wanted to be a vet. I wanted to be an actor. When I was really little, I don't know why, but I wanted to be a pastor. When I was like a small child. I wanted to be a celebrity by any means necessary. This is Spike Drop Vegas Heist. These players are playing for a lot of money today. I'm only here for a two feet. I don't really care about any other place. Can't even comprehend what is going on, but I like it. Listen up, Nets World. Get into the action and lock in a 2024-25 Nets level membership. Yeah! Members have it all. From exclusive events and behind-the-scenes access to discounts across merch and tickets. Not to mention the ticket flexibility in the first place with round-the-clock management and seamless transfer to your squad. This is Brooklyn, and it's yours. Become a member today. Playing in Yankee Stadium is the best thing that could ever happen to a ball player.
for Soto. Aaron Judge crushes one. Get all the Yankees action. The Yes set. Innovating to prepare students for our fast-changing world. They're skilled experts. Discovering a universe of solutions. Telling stories. Inspiring. Mentoring. Connecting cultures. Leading by example. Teaching is a journey that shapes lives. Are you ready to begin? Explore teaching at teach.org. When I hit 80, I needed help around the home. A friend of mine told me to call Freedom Care. And they'll pay my granddaughter to take care of me. Funded by Medicaid, Freedom Care allows people to choose who provides their care, and the caregiver gets paid instantly after their shift. Life is sweeter with her around. Nana gave me so much joy as a child. Now it's my turn to return the love. Call now to find out benefits and pay, and how fast you can get started. Welcome to Win Reality. Experience unlimited at bats from home. See game speed pitches for more than 600 pitchers. Get ready for all game situations. Face your friends in live competitions. Win Reality. Baseball uncaged. Shopping done. Got a phone and a watch for the kids. Aren't you worried about social media? Nope. Got gab devices. Kids save phones and watches. No social media. No internet. Safe watches and phones designed for kids and teens. There are trucks, and then there's the GMC Sierra. Available with the connected driving experience. And the world's first six-function multi-pro tailgate. GMC Sierra. It's the truck. Or get 6,000 purchase allowance when you trade in an eligible vehicle. That's 10% below MSRP on select GMC Sierra models. We are professional grade. GMC. What time is it? Showtime! You know what's surprising? Subway at 2 a.m.? Oh, no. The prizes you could win with the new scratch off games from the New York Lottery. That is surprising. Yeah, it's nuts. Bonkers. Seriously, that is outrageous. Nothing surprises a New Yorker like new monthly scratch-off games from the New York Lottery. Play $10 million cash now. Smile, you found it. The feeling of finding psoriasis can't filter out the real you. So go ahead, live unfiltered with the one and only Sotic2, a once daily pill for moderate to severe plaque psoriasis and the chance at clear or almost clear skin. It's like the feeling of finding you're so ready for your close-up or finding you don't have to hide your skin, just your background. Once Daily Sotic 2 was proven better, getting more people clearer skin than the leading pill. Don't take if you're allergic to Sotic 2. Serious reactions can occur. Sotic 2 can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB. Serious infections, cancers including lymphoma, muscle problems, and changes in certain labs have occurred. Tell your doctor if you have an infection, liver or kidney problems, high triglycerides, or had a vaccine or plan to. Sotic 2 is a Tic 2 inhibitor. Tic 2 is part of the Jack family. It's not known as Sotic 2 has the same risks as Jack inhibitors. Find what plaque psoriasis has been hiding. There's only one so tick to, so ask for it by name. So clearly you, so tick to. I love it. And a little uh, in-studio action tomorrow. Oh, yeah. No Yankee game. I'll be there with you. I'll be there with you. Christian in Carmel. Michael? Yes, Christian. How you doing, Mike? Don? Uh, I, uh, I just had a quick question. Just curious, what do you think the Yankees do with uh, Glaber at the end of the year? Do you think they uh, move him at the deadline? I don't think they do, but do you, I don't think they're willing to pay him. Uh, no, I don't. Know. They, I mean, if, if, if they're having a good season, they're not going to move him at the deadline. But at the end of the year, Christian, I think they'll say thank you for your service. Unless, you know, he takes a ridiculously small amount. I mean, he's going to want... You know, fifteen to twenty million dollars a year. They, they, I mean, they're going to have to rearrange things. They have to pay Soto if they want to get him back. So, 
I think this is it. I mean, that's how they'll save money. They'll have one of their young, you know, maybe it's Peraza that comes up and is the second baseman. But um, or, or maybe you plug in, you know, DJ Lemayu at second base. I think this is it for Glaber. I really do. Like I said, he's going to deserve to make a lot of money. He's going to be 28 years old next year. And I, I don't think the Yankees are going to lock in for that long. I could be wrong, but that's just my take. I don't think they will. Let's go to Ryan in Rochester. Ryan. Hey, Mike and Don. Long time listener, first time caller. How Welcome you aboard, doing? man. What's up? So, Mike, I actually met you back in 2016 as a kid, and the election was that year. And right. so I made you a Michael K. president sign and brought it to a Yankee Met game. And you spotted us and brought us up to the booth after the game. And I just want to say we met you, and you were awesome. You were really cool. Oh, so thanks, Ryan. It, man. You're cool. And I didn't uh, win the I election, Ryan. <laughs> I wish you did. <laughs> uh, but, hey, uh, so my question is, uh, is the Yankee one. Uh, what do you think they're going to do with Jason Dominguez when he gets back? Because obviously, you know, you got Verdugo, Soto, Judge, and Stan as the DH, so it kind of clogs up. And also, do you think they're going to keep Verdugo next year then, if that's the case, to bring back Soto? I think with their young players, Ryan, I don't think they'll keep Verdugo. Uh, but for this year, if Stanton continues to hit at a decent rate, then I think Dominguez is going to go to the minor leagues and play in the minor leagues. They're not going to force it. I mean, there's really no place to put him. And, and if Verdugo has the year they think he's going to have, Soto's entrenched in right, Judge will be in center, Verdugo will be in left, and Stanton will be the DH. Uh, the only way I think you see Dominguez this year, because they're not going to have him on the bench, he's still really young, they'll just have him play at Scranton. But if, if Stanton falters or is on the I.L., then you either DH Judge or Soto, and you put Dominguez in center. But just because Dominguez had that great eight or nine games last year, that doesn't ensure that he's going to come back to the big leagues when he's healthy. It's going to be tough, but that, that's just the way it is. Let's go to Danny in Long Island. Danny. Close it up today. Uh, just, to cut, just to recap, Michael, I'm with you, $250 million. I can sit on that, on that secret as I'm eating crack crab down in the Bahamas. You know, that's not, that's not a problem. I'm like, like Eddie Mur the last scene from Eddie Murphy, when they asked if he wanted a lobster or a crack crab, and he said, why not both? And your wife would be no fine problem. with it, too, right, Danny? I, my, if I told my wife, she said, you should have got $500 million and done the weekend. That's, you know, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Listen, uh, for a little hockey thing, then, then baseball. I own the Rangers. has to happen more often, Don. I'm looking at these games. They play each other. I've been an Islander fan for my whole life. And if you're in New York and you're under 40 years old, you have no idea what it was like. The Rangers were here forever. The Islanders showed up. Right away had success. Dick Young had to pull the original kid from Long Island caricature. Mike Lupica actually, Mike Lupica actually traveled out to the island to watch games and yeah. reported on him. It was the front page of the paper. And on this day, 40 years ago, where they beat them in the playoffs for the fourth straight year on a Game 5 overtime goal that the announcer, who I watched it on YouTube before, from uh, Canadian Hockey, said the greatest 10 minutes in the history of overtime hockey. It was every every game was great. Uh they need to go back to Patrick Division, where I play the Flyers seven times. I play the Devils. I play the Rangers. These games are better well, than me watching the Kraken. I can do it without the Kraken. I know, you know, blah, blah, blah. But in, this is what's great. And I, and I hope the Islanders play the Rangers in the first round. I don't, the Islanders are not going to win, but what it would do for hockey in this town and the intensity would be great. And if the Rangers could survive it, they would have been better off because the intensity will be off the chart. Michael, as far as baseball and the injuries for the pitcher, just a question and early answer. Is it got anything to do with the removal of the sticky stuff? Because it's yes. all about spin ratio. And if, you, if you're trying to get the same spin ratio and you're gripping the ball harder and harder, that's where you're putting the stress on these arms. It's not the fastball. It's the spin no, ratio. No, I think it's, on it's a combination, Danny. Um, yeah, it's a combination of everything. Tom Glass now said removing the sticky stuff is really hurting people's elbows. Listen, it's, 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 it's human development. I always say to people, two off, offensive linemen and defensive linemen have grown continuously. Tom C. was pitching against guys that weighed 160 pounds, couldn't hit a home run if the bounce. Now the ball is at Spalding, the players are jacked up, the bats are better, the ball's every, the strike zone's the size of a box. It's, it's something has to happen where we go back to, and it'll never happen because baseball wants seven to six. They don't 
all want one to nothing, which one to nothing is equally as beautiful as far as yeah. I'm concerned. You know, and that's and that's the shame because the, the hockey players are bigger, but it equals each other out. Baseball, nobody looked like John Carlo Stanton. I would tell people, Boog Pow was a normal sized guy with a gut. He was the biggest guy when I was a kid. Oh, well, Boog and Pow. Frank Look Howard. Frank Howard. Frank Howard. They were just big lumbering dudes. They right. weren't built. They weren't cut. No, you're you're absolutely right. Yeah, I mean the bodies have changed, but pitchers' of bodies have changed too. Tom Seaver was a big man. But there are a lot of big pitchers as yeah. well. And, and also, they're throwing weighted balls. And from the time that they're eight years old, they're training for velocity. So people are throwing harder. Yeah, but the problem is is that it's obviously hurting the pitchers. Like, the game is evolving into a stronger, faster game. And, and maybe the pitchers physically can't keep up. Because uh, now they've got to throw be hard, and before harder. Before we break. And they can do it. Um, Aaron Boone according to Brian Hoke of MLB.com, said moving Volpe into the leadoff spot was more about Glaber Torres, hmm. uh, who said he senses Torres was pressing at the top. Volpe hitting leadoff, quote, could be something here long-term, but we'll keep it fluid. So that's from Aaron. So as we, we summarized earlier, has something mo more to do with Glaber. And then Ian Begley reporting, Julius Randle is listed out due to surgery. On the injury report, according to league sources, Randall had successful surgery on his right shoulder yesterday. The Knicks have said he'd be reevaluated in five months. So that's the latest, and now the greatest ENN will happen in just a couple of minutes. Yay! Stay right here on Yes and 987 ESPN. For years, one company has battled to deliver business products the next day with no freight charges. Now, WB Mason, with their famous fleet of trucks and drivers, faces their biggest challenge, rescuing shipping and packaging buyers from expensive freight charges. That's right. Now, boxes, stretch film, and packaging tape are delivered the very next day at amazingly low prices. So, who do you call for fast delivery and no expensive freight charges? Who but WB Mason? We all want to feel safe when traveling. That's why if you see something that feels suspicious, such as an abandoned bag or erratic behavior from a passenger, just call 911. You can call anonymously, and it's okay if it turns out to be nothing. Work together with the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey to keep our transportation facilities safe. Visit PANYNJ.gov to learn more. You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stresses just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yep. Tough day at work. Nice cruiser sorts you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Oh, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You gotta pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related. So. Ah, yee. Oh, that is a vibrating pain. If you've been diagnosed with mesothelioma or asbestos lung cancer, choose the right law firm by asking, what are your highest verdicts? What experience do you have? How many lawyers are on staff? How many clients have you represented? Speak to Weitz and Luxembourg at 800-LAW-6789 to get unmatched answers. It's the biggest financial decision of your life. Call 800-LAW-6789 or visit misowin.com. With features you won't find on Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, or Subaru Forester, the Hyundai Tucson puts the other guys in their place. Namely, the rear view mirror. Only a Tucson compares to a Tucson. Lease an all-wheel drive Tucson for $229 a month or get 3.79% APR or up to $1250 bonus cash. Hurry, offers end soon. I'm having fun, don't put me down, I'll never let you With Allegra, allergies won't hold me back. I won't let you Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin, and unlike Zyrtec, won't make me drowsy. <laughs> Nothing beats Allegra. It's the fastest non-drowsy 24-hour allergy relief.
Life is hard, but you guys have to work harder. Okay? No, no, I do not do it. <laughs> My name is O'Neill Trinidad, and I want to live. Taste is not an option. Taste is everything. 1800, the world's most awarded tequila. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching Yes. Tonight, coverage begins at 6.30, only on Prime. Sarah, you got this, okay? But they lost. Not really. Not where it counts. Everybody, how are you? Oh, welcome to ENN on T. Ray Row. It is presented by Security Dodge. Go see Michelle Scalise and come get some. Yeah. I'd like to start off by saying good evening to Michael. Because I'm gutless <laughs> and I have no guts. That's what gutless is. That was great. I thought uh, so. Michael was it? again. Oh, sorry, Don. Go ahead. I was just say he, did, he described it well. Do you want to be a god or a clod? Can we make that a, a segment somehow? I just don't know how. I've been thinking about it. Well, I, I mean, we, we have to replace would you, so. <laughs> god or we clod Wednesday one. doesn't really <laughs> ring. It doesn't work. We can have more than one. It doesn't have to be tied to a day. Uh, but it, but if you had to use uh, clod in this sentence, Michael. You're an insensitive clod, and I hope you fall and break your neck. That's un that's unfortunate. <laughs> wow. Well, good evening to Don. I know. I know. I like that one. That what was one. that about, Don? I don't even know. Uh, uh, you was, said you know. It was um, when we were talking about would, like you're taking it too seriously or whatever, and you said, I know. I know. Wow. So there you go. That was today? I don't even remember. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, a big, big busy day. Big, you know, a lot happened today. I, I think so. I think, it's, I think it was a very interesting day. Um, very interesting for the Milwaukee Bucks because they are going to be without Giannis Antetokounmpo for the rest of the regular season after... Uh, he ha suffered a calf injury in the third quarter yesterday in the game against Boston. Uh, and he's going to receive daily treatment and evaluation. Adrian Wojnarowski was on NBA Today earlier and talked about the impact of the honest injury. This is a Bucks team that was put together to go deep into June, but there's a world where without Giannis Antetokounmpo early in a playoff series, that they can fall behind and maybe not be able to catch back up when he comes. They have not played well. And what is the timeline for Giannis Woj? Certainly knowing a Tentacupo, you know, he wants to be on the court, and he has a physical tolerance that allows him to play. Uh, this organization needs him, and they need him early in the playoffs, especially with the way they have played, really, for the last couple months. Absolutely. I don't know. Pain management, that, that's, that's not the issue here. You know, you got a call for that, Don. A call for pain management? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jay Shaw. That's right, but you know what? He didn't pay for today. Oh. <laughs> What the hell? So, so a, a lot of people sat out today. He will not. Do you want to be a god or a clod? So he's a clod today. No. No. I'm just saying, you get what you're saying. Dr. Jay Shaw. Oh, no, he's a god. Yeah. Always. Always. Dr. We love Dr. He, Shaw. He heals people. He does heal people. That's right. Do you want to be a god or a clod? I know. I know. And if I broke my neck like it was suggested on the, the Google, then I can go see him. Dr. J. Shaw. Yeah. Wait, who suggested you break your neck? No, we were oh, an incense oh, 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 okay. that I hope you fall and break your neck. <laughs> that guy. Gotcha. That's an unfortunate. That really is out of that context. That wasn't me. That was me no. reading the Google definition. Just to clarify to everybody, Michael did not say that. That was him reading something. Right. Yeah. No, just to clarify for one person. Just to okay. clarify. Uh, guys, Mel Didn't hear from Griffin today. We didn't hear from Griffin. He didn't call. I think he's mad he lost. Hey, guys. How are you? Well, he, I think he sounded pretty... He was ready to realize that he was going to lose to a, to a yelling Don. Well, yeah, but then the reality sets in. That's true. He's a loser now. Oh, well, wait a minute. You know what? He lost to oh. Don. Ergo, loser. Would you call Wayne Gretzky 
a loser? Yeah, when it comes would to you, goat madness, he's a loser. Would you call Madonna a loser? Loser. I got news would for you. Would you call uh, and Tom I'm Brady talk, a loser? I'm going to call Tom Brady a loser, too, because you're going to beat him. He's going to be, you're going to win, Don. So I'm going to, it looks like I'm going to go to the final of uh, Goat Now, Madden. we know that you and Larry have almost an unnatural friendship. Do you think he's politicking for you during this? I think Gordon would be, too. Yeah, I think, I think they both are, sure. And, and doesn't you like that kind of either. bastardize the whole thing? Uh, no, I, listen, I don't think that they're going on the air saying vote for, but I think they're probably rooting for me. I think they're, they're, they're politicking for you. I think they are going on, uh, uh, you know, vote for Don. I don't think so. They, they have no friendship with Madonna. I, but I, I would, I would <laughs> you say don't know that. that. I don't think New York has any love for Tom Brady. There's still four yeah, hours left in voting, and I have a 74.6 to 25.4 lead on Tom Brady, so vote early and often. And, and you don't find this distasteful. And it looks like I'm going to be going against Michael Jordan in the final. Oh, my. Because Jordan's up 64. Move over LeBron. So that, wait, 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 wait. who's Jordan up against? Muhammad Ali. That's a tough one. There's not nobodies in, in Goat Madness except me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, apparently you're not a nobody. Now, the best thing I saw from this, because when I noticed that Don had moved on, I retweeted Gordon's tweet, and all of the tweets are on Gordon Damer's Twitter, at Gordon Damer, uh, to vote in Goat Madness. That's D-A-M-E-R. Um, that's right. Uh, he... I said it's Don versus Tom. And if everybody remembers the side talk video from when the Knicks beat the Celtics in double overtime, I think it's two years ago now on the opening night, and all of the yelling and screaming that came from that, a lot of people were very upset at Tom Brady for some reason, and they put that video up showing that everybody's on Don's side here. New York does not yeah, like Tom Brady. Yeah, they're not big Tom Brady guys. Bing bong. So go out and vote, but I, I think, I think Don, I think you're okay. I think you're going to be okay here. I do. Well, I'd be honored to win, just like I was honored to win Drop uh, Madness here. You think you're going to pop on? Uh, if you, if oh, you if win, it's a little they, celebration. If, if they want, if they invite me, I'm not just going to call in. No, well, I've mean, done that before. Well, I already heard they're going to get, they're going to get, they're going to get Jordan. Really? Yeah, they're going to get Tom. So well. they're going to have to have you. Well, I'll and, be driving home from the uh, Ranger game tomorrow. Maybe and, I'll pop on. And Layla Ali will represent Muhammad Ali. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Mel Kuyper Jr. on Get Up talking about Mock Draft 4.0, something interesting that he had, which he doesn't usually do for the New York football giants. Yeah, get Malik neighbors for Daniel Jones to try to help him and develop and build on what he did two years ago when he won a playoff game against Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings. It looked like he was moving forward to be an elite quarterback. Well, injuries, obviously, team around him, problems there. So you get the insurance. So you get Brian Dayball says, okay, I get the receiver to help Daniel, but I also get some insurance moving up to get Bo Nix. Bo Nix is 24. Bo Nix has a gazillion starts. J.J. McCarthy's just 21 years of age. Now you get a guy more energetic. NFL ready. You get a guy that, hey, if Daniel Jones gets injured or he doesn't take that next step, then you have Bo Nix waiting there to reset things and become that guy. Well, the neighbors said quarterback wise, they said they're going to address it at some point. May not at six. Maybe a wide receiver there, but then you go back up and get the quarterback. Will Levis, Tennessee moved up and got him last year early in the second round. Similar situation here with the Giants moving up to get Bo Nix. I'm not sure I love Bo Nix. Mm -hmm. Trading up to get Bonix, mind you. And, and you know what it does? Here's what I think it does, Don. I believe it gives them three years of Daniel Jones. Bonix isn't ready to play. So if no. Daniel Jones is healthy, he's going to play out the other two years of that contract. Well, here's what I need to know. If they love Bonix, right. but they understand that nobody else does, so they're not going to draft him high, try to get more value drafting him in the second round. That's good. Yeah. If they don't like him... Then don't draft him. Like it, to me, it doesn't become more attractive the lower in the draft. If you don't right. like the quarterback, then don't, you don't draft him. I don't care if you draft him in the seventh round. If you don't like him, don't draft him. So, because right, Michael, they have the needs. I mean, at 33, you can draft somebody that can help you right now. If they like him, draft him. If you don't like him, don't draft him. Like I don't see the attractiveness in taking a quarterback you don't love because it ends up being later on in the draft. Unless you're just going to take a flyer late and hope. But you don't poke and hope at 33 overall. No, they must love them. And but, you know, they look... The I mean, here's twice the big decision they're going to have to have. Let's say they love J.J. McCarthy. Again, I, I keep hearing that, you know, teams are going to trade up. Mm -hmm. Like, Minnesota might trade up to get J.J. McCarthy with the fifth. That's okay. what Mel has. Right, that's what Mel has, right? Yep. Well, what if they don't? What if he drops mm -hmm. to the Giants? Do the Giants then take J.J. McCarthy and not have a weapon mm -hmm. for Daniel? 
if you like J.J. McCarthy and you think he's the Boy. future, you gobbled him up. But if you're not sure, then take the better player, Michael. Like, the fact that you need a quarterback, this is not sustenance where I need, I need to eat, so I'm going to go to the supermarket and get food. I need a quarterback. I've got to go out and get the right quarterback. Just don't take a quarterback because you need one. What if they don't like any of the quarterbacks? What if Caleb Williams is the only one they love? Well, they know they can't get him because they can't trade up the one, so take the best possible player at six. Now, if you like a quarterback but you think you can get him later, well, then you roll the dice you take a chance. That's part of being a good general manager. But all of a sudden, a quarterback that I don't believe has a future doesn't all of a sudden develop into having a future because you took him in the second round. And by the way, because of the way that Mel has shaped this, you now get the second best in the minds of what you would be the Giants, the second best non-quarterback in this draft. Because the only player that isn't a quarterback that's taken in the first five picks is Marvin Harrison Jr., and he goes to Arizona. Right. And I've heard from a lot of um, you know draft experts that, that neighbors might be better. So you'd possibly get, in some, in some people's eyes, the best wide receiver in the draft. And then you'd trade, according to Mel, what it would have to take was this year's second to move up the spots and next year's second to draft. Because the Giants next. had two seconds, and they used the other one on Burns. Right. Yep, to get so Burns. they only have one, so they'd have to trade next year's as well. But I, even the two, but even looking at the numbers that they use, Michael, mm -hmm. for draft equivalency, oh, we should take a look at that. The the two second round picks would be an overpay. Yes. To move back into the first round, so that's probably why they dealt one of the second round picks because they can use something else to to for a better numerical value. Yeah, I had that. I'm gonna see if I still have. Yeah, but they don't bag. think they have to move into the first round to get Bo Nix. They think they have to move up to the top of the second. Yeah, but isn't that first round of Jace like the 33rd pick? I guess you can look at it that way. We could always uh, we'll find that pick values chart. But I just thought it was interesting. Um, uh, something that would be interesting uh, to Peter is that they the commanders do take Jaden Daniels. Brian Kelly almost confirmed it in an interview mm. a couple weeks ago. You hear that? Yeah. So he's going to fit great smart. in Washington. That was strange. Um, Drake May goes to the New England Patriots. I mentioned uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., the wide receiver to Ohio State. The Vikings trade with the Chargers to get J.J. McCarthy. Malik Neighbors goes to the Giants. At 10, the Jets take... Brock Bowers. That's right. He's been linked there a lot. Now, you have to wonder, do... It, and they're, they're saying that he's otherworldly, off the charts, great. Yep. Two-time Mackey Award winner for best tight end. And people say he could... And Mella said this, too, that he could play anywhere and do anything. It's a weapon. You need a weapon. Absolutely. Um, so that would be something that would be interesting uh, for the Jets. And I don't think fans would be upset about that. Maybe they'd want an offensive lineman. Uh, but, yeah, Mel Kuyper, Mach 4.0. Take a look at that. It is on ESPN Plus right now if you want to take a look. So does he get five eventually? Like you one know, right before the draft? I, I believe uh, John Winthrop told me that they said this was going to be his last one. I thought he gave one out morning of the draft. I think so, too. I think I Winthrop is wrong. Oh, my. So we'll take a look. But that could be the last one before the draft in two weeks now. We're very close, guys. Very, very, very close. Yeah, it happens pretty fast. Uh, John Calipari officially hired as the Arkansas men's basketball coach. A five-year deal with a salary beginning at $7 million per season. The deal contains two automatic rollover years for NCAA tournament appearances that would extend the contract to 2031, and it includes a $1 million signing bonus, $500,000 retention bonus, and in Kentucky, he made $8.5 million a season. So yeah, why? He wasn't being fired. Well, what's this about? Well, no, he said that they need a new voice. Okay. Oh, so he's going to be altruistic. He's going to make eight point six million, and he's going to drop to seven million yeah. because they need a new voice. Need a voice. Inhale some helium. Talk with a high voice during halftime. One of those. Okay, I'll play alongs. Uh, yeah, and I thought like, why, why not go back to the NBA? Right. I mean, he wasn't awful in the NBA. That was thirty years ago. But that's why there's no NBA team that would pay him seven million dollars a year. You know what? Some NBA coaches make a lot of money though. I but mean, not seven. Look at Monty Williams. They're making he's making more than that. Yeah, but are you? Would, would, is there an NBA team? I don't think so. Now, not that, at sixty years old. No. I don't no. Think so. But it is kind of if uh, Arkansas. Well, good luck. I mean, I give him I, Michael. I give him credit. He's gone. You know, well, UMass early in his career, but Memphis. Yes. Yeah. You know, you, he you, loves know, the you know what I think it is, Don. I mean, it's a different world now. So this is what I believe it is with the Walton money. And the Tyson money, he has an unlimited NIL budget. Right. And as big a school and as a big a blue blood as Kentucky is, they're they're limited compared to what Arkansas could give players. So he probably read it and said, I can't, I can't continue to bring kids in without paying them. 
and I got a better chance of paying them with the Walmart money and with Tyson chicken money than I do with anybody in Kentucky. It could almost be exactly that. Yeah. Because you'd, you'd almost consider it a lateral move, if not a step down, depending on if you consider Kentucky a blue blood or not. But you're in the SEC still, and now you're going to be able to compete in the SEC with apparently a bigger budget for NIL. And Arkansas is not nobody. Not nobody basketball. at all. There's a history there. So that's interesting. Something else, Michael, we have another possible relocation situation. Talk to me. This time with the NHL. As you know, uh, Don and I have talked about it a lot on Game Misconduct. Download wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, the Arizona Coyotes are trying as best as they can to stay in Arizona. They're trying to build their own arena, find a place for this arena, and it's just not coming to fruition, it seems like. And now there's a report, sources tell ESPN, the NHL is preparing a contingency to relocate the Coyotes to Utah next season. Apparently, while they're making the schedule this offseason, they'll be creating two schedules, one in which the Coyotes are in Arizona and one where they are in Utah. First reported by the Daily Faceoff. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I I feel bad for Arizona fans because it does seem like they really do want to keep this team here. <clears throat> but unlike the A's, the Arizona has tried their best to keep this team in Arizona, and I just don't know if it's going to pan out. And Utah makes sense, Michael. It's a nice market. It can stick. It can keep them in the Central Division so they don't have to realign. Keep the name. And they can keep the name because we looked it up during uh, the Game Misconduct podcast, which you can get wherever you get your podcasts. There are coyotes in Utah. A lot of them. This is what well, there, there, There's not jazz in Utah, so it right. doesn't so, really matter. So that that's tells exactly, you they don't have to change Michael, it. <laughs> that is, when I said that, that's exactly what Don said today. You right. guys have worked together for two, <laughs> two, <laughs> two I don't know if it's too long, but it's been a long time. Well, you've, so. you know, you can finish each other's sandwiches. We have the same uh, sentences. Brain. <laughs> <laughs> Except when it comes to would you? Oh, boy. And general intelligence. But as far as wow. talk show is concerned, I think we share the same brain. Would you like to hear uh, Michael Pierre Laviolette's reaction no, I'm good. Uh, to the hit? Oh, no, no you're good. No, no, I won't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, we could, it's well, fun was, to say, though, isn't it? It is fun. I was, well, uh, Mika Zibanejad was uh, hit uh, by uh, Adam Pellick in the middle of the ice in the third period, and Peter Laviolette did not like it. He came back at the end from that vicious hit. Yeah, he came back. That vicious shoulder elbow to the head. Watch it. Do you think it was intentional that it wasn't a collision? I do. Vicious. Now, it was vicious, but it wasn't... Not intentional. It wasn't, no, ma it wasn't malicious. But vicious suggests that there was intent, Ten. and I, I, I don't see it, and I can't find anybody else other than other, you know, Ranger fans that want to agree with Peter that agree with it. I mean, I went into the postgame show, only wanted to hear Peter tell us if Mika was okay. Uh, and he was on the bench. And, and I was surprised to hear that he said, you know, vicious hit. I, I really, I mean, because the analysis in real time seemed to be that it was an accident. Now, they were off today. Maybe he gets a second glance at it before the game. He says something. I, I don't know. But un unless he can see intent, because he did play defense in the National Hockey League, uh, just 12 games, but he was a defenseman. Maybe he sees something in Pelic that he was able to make it seem like it was an accident, it was intentional, but nobody else picked up on it. And Patrick Waugh agrees with you, Don. Mm. He didn't see anything with the Pelix Sabanishai collision. I don't know why we're talking about this, quite honestly. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm just a little surprised because it was clear in my mind that it was accidental. So, I, I mean, we could talk about it for an hour if you want to, but I think we're wasting our time. It was accidental. That's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. Well, they play on Saturday. We'll see if everybody still feels the same way. And he, and he said that sometimes, like, almost apologizing for Laviolette, that sometimes in the heat of the moment you say things. Well, I'll put it this way. The Trocheck hit was far more egregious. on The hit on Trocheck, and if you want to equate the two things and just say, yeah, that frustrated me. You but, know what else frustrated me? That other thing. I could see but, that. But, but even the Dobson play, guys, it wasn't vicious. It was just a penalty they didn't call. The problem, I have, I have less of a problem with Dobson. I have more of a problem with Kelly Sutherland not making the call. But... I, I don't want there to be all the histrionics. Like, I know the fans love it, and you have a bloodbath on Saturday. The Islanders have a game to win to make the playoffs. The Rangers have a game to win to solidify first place in the Eastern Conference. Let's not make it a clown show, okay? It was it what happened with the Devils. That was one thing I understood. There was a, a, a pound of flesh to be had. But what are, you, what are you going after? The only problem you should have if you're a Ranger fan is Kelly Sutherland not making a call. So oh, are you going to go after Pellick for standing there? Just because one person felt that he was, uh, it was egregious, I, 
But listen, Rempe should probably play. I'm not saying that, but let's not make it a clown show, please. Speaking of stories that have kind of been swept under the rug, Don, you brought this up a, probably seems like almost a month ago on ENN. Jante Porter, uh, who was caught by the Toronto Raptors possibly, uh, you know, betting on himself right. for props in, in basketball, Michael. Have you heard this story? No. So he's currently, Jonte Porter is currently under investigation, the brother of Michael Porter for the Denver Nuggets, uh, following multiple instances of betting irregularities over the past several months involving his own props. And there was a story about what, what had happened, that there were games where the, the under on his props hit, and, and after a minute of play, he said he had a headache and, and stopped playing, and, and, and so many things that would seem utterly egregious. And uh, Adam Silver agreed. He spoke today. Uh, and called it a cardinal sin. Um, he was at the Board of Governors meetings in Midtown. I have enormous range of discipline available to me, Silver said. But it's a cardinal sin, what he's accused of in the NBA. And the ultimate extreme option I have is to ban him from the game. He has to be banned from the game if he did it. If, if, this, if this happened, uh, what, what else can you do? You have to. He can never play basketball in the NBA again. Cra crazy. Also, crazy how story. dumb could the guy be to do that? It just seems like it's so, like, you know, the, the most profitable. And also, like, well, the most profitable prop today was Jonte Porter. My question is, and all due respect to Jonte Porter, he's an NBA player. I'll never make a professional sport in my life. Why does DraftKings have Jonte Porter over-unders for points and rebounds and assists? How many minutes does this guy play a day? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Very interesting story. Something we'll have to keep an eye on. Packers-Eagles, the Friday night game in Brazil, week one. The first ever game in South America will be played in Sao Paulo, Brazil on Friday, September 6th, one night after the traditional season opener involving the defending Super Bowl champions. It'll be the first time since 1970 the NFL has played a Friday night game in week one. Michael, we talked about this while you were, uh, while you were away. Uh, Monday night? Wednesday night because of Christmas. Thursday night, now Friday. There'll be Saturday games and Sunday. All we need is Tuesday. And the NFL will have officially taken over every day of the calendar. The more days you play, the more packages you could sell to television networks. So it's going to happen. And by the way, don't you think it's a natural, Don? ESPN has to send Sal Powell and Tony to that game so he can say reporting from Sal Powell. This is Sal Powell. You know what? Is it any he different? follows the Eagles. No, listen, they sent uh, uh, Windhorse to France for a 30-second interview. What's the difference? <laughs> it's very. Uh, can we do point guard again? Can we do point guard again? That's going to do it, guys, oh, for ENN today. That, clearly. It was brought to you by Security Dodge. Shop 24-7 at securitydodge.com during their Dodge Power Shot Days, Jeep Celebration Event, and Ram Truck Month. The big dilemma for Don, no Met game tonight because it's rained out. Does he mm. tune into Prime and watch the Yankees and the Marlins? He or does he just say, you know what, let oh, me catch right, up on, on, on Mama's Family? I, no, 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 Mama's Family. I do have a lot of uh, um, Bob Hart out of shoulders that I got to... <laughs> <laughs> I think they were... I think... <laughs> Is it as good a show now that Bob is thin? Uh, no, it's a little disconcerting, actually. He's a different person, He's isn't a different he? human being. It's really. unbelievable. It's probably very Bob. healthy for him, though. That's yeah, all that no, matters. I'm sure. We're rooting for him. Yeah, so we are. <laughs> In the words of Billy Joel, life is a series of alos and goodbyes. I'm afraid it's time for a goodbye again. See, everybody have a great night. That's a wrap on the show for today. Coming up next, Brooklyn Nets Magazine. And then following that, our coverage of the Nets and Raptors gets underway with the pregame show. Remember, the Yankees are on prime video tonight, starting at 630. For all of us here on the Michael K Show, this is Chris Sheeran saying have a great night. Enjoy the games. We'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock. The Michael K. Show on Yes is brought to you in part by Audi, the official luxury vehicle of the New York Yankees.